and a happy Tuesday morning. Is it? Is it happy? Well, it's good Is for it me. A, I'm, it's good I'm for just you. happy to yeah. be here. Welcome to the EST Hango, presented by Mods Clamato Caesar, available in both original and variety. 12 packs, a great pack size for entertaining and hanging out with your friends. You can get the original, you can get extra spicy, you can get pickled bean. Uh, the Hango, presented by Mods Clamato Caesar, Matawana, Tom Guzzola, Will Fraser with us, uh, as well Derek Van Dees from NHL.com. He will join us very shortly. He's just on his way in um busy night for him probably writing a little bit i would assume i would think so uh, yeah. you had a late it, night last night isn't with it the, the same post- script <laughs> just rewrite it yeah. just, just they changed the yeah, yeah. oilers yeah. lose to search yeah. you know find and how replace. hard is that find and replace <laughs> that's all you need what media actually vancouver is a good team right now so yeah which but they shouldn't be no, they should not be. They right? have good elements, and they're they playing some, together. They have some really nice pieces, but, man, they are not a deep squad. Like, they should not be as good as they are right now. That's a classic example of everybody pulling in the same direction. And goalie. Goalie, yep. Yeah, uh, excellent I mean, goalie. They've always had a strong goalie. I've always yeah. uh, been a little jealous of their goaltending situation. Because it in. seems like they're that organization that just keeps churning out goaltenders. And, yep. then, and then trading them. And then trading they, them. And, and then, then they ruin the it with one. somebody, but yeah. then the next person's yeah. there and yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah. It's all fine, yeah. whatever. They'll ruin it with that next. So they'll ruin it with Demko yeah, at yeah. some point. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, he'll be good, I think, for the most part, yeah. with where it is. Um, how are you today? Good. Sorry, guys, I'm a little late. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. That's the that's that's the show, basically. Come and go, kind <laughs> of. Whatever. It's just the hangout. Uh, how are you doing from yesterday? <sighs> You know what? It just you know I saw it coming. though, right? Uh, hey, well, good to see you. Well, hey, it's been a while. It looked good. <laughs> uh, you see it coming. The shots are nineteen and one. You go. I've seen this story before. Yeah, I've yeah. seen this happen before. They're gonna come back and score one. It's gonna be one one. And yeah. then they score two two one three one. And now you're going in their first intermission. Shots are nineteen to seven, and you're yeah. down three one. Yeah, yeah. They're hey. getting goalied. Yeah. You're yeah. now the Western Canadian correspondent for NHL.com, so you technically you do cover the Canucks. So could you not have written the good story about how well the Canucks have started? Oh, I can, and I probably will. <laughs> yes. I'll probably get out there eventually at some point. Yeah, We'll see how this Oilers road trip goes, but I'll probably will get out to Vancouver. But isn't this the story of hockey right now, the Oilers, with how bad they've been with the expectations around yeah. this team and with the players that they have on their, this team and with where they're sitting, where we have the last... The two worst teams playing on Thursday night. Yeah. And it involves the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, is this it, not then kind of the story of hockey? I right was now? full team not panic. Like, I talking with friends, and they're heading into that game against Nashville, and I'm like, and my friend, shout out to Brad, who called it. He's like, I don't like the feel of this. I'm like, it's Nashville, man. Like, they've owned this team for, yeah. like, three years in a row. They've owned this team. And then they lose to Nashville, and it's an absolute 180-degree flip for me. I'm like... Well, now it's a five alarm fire. If yeah. they can't beat Nashville, they are in serious trouble. And so last night didn't surprise me at all because Vancouver's always played them hard. And this year, starting in preseason, has had their numbers. So yeah. there's something about it. This you know, is, this is a, a spooky situation. Well, last night on the yeah, you're right. And uh, last night on the post game show, Matt Cassie and myself. Not to say that we're at a loss for words, but like how much more explaining can you do or trying to break it down? I was at the point where I was just like, they're finding different ways to lose, yeah, which is so sad. And I said, too, that I want, was expecting them to lose. I yeah. really was. But not like that. No. <laughs> okay? Like I was expecting them to be in the fight. Maybe yeah. they lose... 4-2 with an empty netter, and you're like, okay, well, you know, the record sucks. Vancouver's on a heater right now, and they put up a good fight. But they didn't. Yeah. Outside those first 10 to 15 minutes where this DVD outline, and as we talked about, they were out shooting. They looked like a team that was pissed off and ready to bully a team that should be, quote-unquote, lesser than them. Yeah. They did that for a bit. Then the one goes in, and then you're like, oh, no, that's it. That's it. And it all just crumbled beneath them. So the fact that it went that way, I think that's why you have the mood and the tone that we're hearing and seeing right now. Yeah, I I don't think that there is a panic move that is too unreasonable right now for this <laughs> Oilers squad. Like, if you want to bring up a goaltender from the AHL, go for it. Like, I don't I don't think there's a bad move at this point because. They are too talented 
to be with this record. It's interesting. Everyone wants to make a trade, and I, I just look at a roster that has more than enough talent to be top third in the NHL. And so it is not a talent issue. This is not a team that needs to go in search of higher skill or anything like that. They need some sort of a jolt and they might be playing to get their head coach fired, which surprises me because the impression is they really like their head coach, but they're not playing like they want to keep them around as their head coach. No, not really. And you know, it's funny because we've seen this game before. We've seen that story before. We saw that game before. Listen, Goaltending has been an issue here for three years. Yeah. And they have not addressed it. They thought they did. It's not been addressed. Yeah. It's been the same issue. You cannot, you got one guy standing on his head at one end, trying to keep his team in the game. Yeah. And then you got another guy lets in a soft goal to make it 2 1 at the other. Like, that's, you can have the most talented team in the world. But if you have a bad goalie, you're going to have a bad team. And, and I think that's the situation with the Amazon. And when you have a bad goalie and they're mentally fragile right now, yeah. like, they go down 2-1 and that's the game. I, like, I they collapse right at that point. I don't think it's the fragility of the the the, the goalies that's the issue. It's the fragility of the team in front mm-hmm. of yeah. that goalie. Yeah. Yeah, right? right. That that this is a team that sees their goaltender let in a soft goal and they deflate. Yeah. They're like, oh, crap, this guy's yeah. not going to stop a beach ball tonight. Yeah. And that's, I think, what we're seeing with mm-hmm. this Oilers squad. It's not so much that the goaltender is letting in a soft goal and then panicking. This is a team that mm-hmm. sees their goaltender and goes, this guy can't help us. Yeah. Like, And that's, that's, that, that's why, like, you want to bring somebody up and throw him in there and see if he can catch fire? Go for it. It yeah. has worked before. In other organizations, why not give it a try? The thing is that no one's going to take Jeff, Jack Campbell off your hands. So if you're going to trade a goalie to get another goalie in and make some room, you're going to have to trade Stu Skinner. Yep. And they're not trading Are you Stu willing Skinner. to do that? No, they're not no, trading they're not. Stu Skinner. But no one's taking Jack Campbell off your hands. Well, maybe what the Minnesota Wild will, <laughs> will do that play over again. Let, uh, let the panic move happen from the Edmonton Oilers and bring in a franchise goaltender. Because, I mean, we've seen <laughs> oh, that move before yeah. where the homegrown kid gets developed and then hits a point where their development is stagnant. Mm-hmm. And the Oilers panic and move them out. Now... Mm-hmm. Which isn't to say that it was the right or wrong move, but uh, and and they become a three time all star yeah. in three consecutive years <laughs> That's right. to go on to a glorious, illustrious NHL network job. Yeah, <laughs> credit to Sean Burke. Yeah, yes, no, honestly, that. Yeah. That's, uh, that that fixed fixed let's in. remember that that goaltender went to Nashville and got booted out of town too, and it's left, like went to Montreal, Montreal. left the Habs. game. I don't yeah. think left the Habs. Yeah, because things were so yeah. bad. He had just had his first. And, him and his yeah. wife had a, their first child. Had to walk away. Yeah. was on the cusp of being done. Yeah, he yeah. was. And he came back. So that's the issue. And another issue, too, is is I'm sick of hearing the oldies got goalied again. Mm-hmm. Like, how many times, how many <laughs> second-string goaltenders have to come in yeah. here and stand on the heads of the orders? Don't talk eventually, about Casey DeSmith well, like that. Eventually, <laughs> something's going to happen, I'm right? I'm being facetious. Right? You're getting 19 shots, and you only have one goal. Yeah. That has to be an issue. Yeah. Okay? What's wrong with your finishing? Why aren't you Why aren't you only scoring one goal on 19 shots? And now you're looking at this team, but they're only scoring two goals a game? This yeah. is the highest-scoring team in the yeah, league yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. 325 goals. They were scoring almost five goals a game last year, yeah. and now they can't get more than three. More than two. Power play two is looking great right now, oh, though. <laughs> unbelievable. Like, the, and you know, com- compound that with a penalty kill. Can't get all penalty, so you're, you know, like, what do they have going for them right they now? They have a lot of. Pro- it's like whack a mole right now. They have so many things going wrong. It's like this is wrong. This is wrong. The RNA can't play. I'm sorry. Like he made so many mistakes last night. Yeah. Now, apart from putting the puck in his own net, right? Like he made so many mistakes last night. Um, so Bouchard, Bouchard has been awful. Yeah, Bouchard is. He's been awful. It, if if you were to tell me it might be time time to move on, I would have no problem with that on a, on an Evan Bouchard. When Brett Kulak and Cody CC are your most consistent defensemen, <coughs> yeah. that's an issue. When Although that is their their claim to fame, but right, like the reason why you have those yeah. guys around is because they are consistent and predictable. Mm-hmm. And so, but at three and five, yes, that's perfect. But yeah. not when they're performing so well or consistently, and they're doing their their usual yeah. bare minimum. Yeah, and they're like one and two. That's yeah. a, that's alarming. Oh, yeah. No, it is alarming. And last look, last year the orders, everyone had a career year with the orders. Three hundred point guys, mm-hmm. but they have like thirteen at least guys that had at least ten goals. Right, a bunch of twenty goal scorers. This year, the, the bottom half of that lineup has not done anything. Well, well the top play. half hasn't done anything huh? either. 
the top half. Well, they have it, but you look at the zeros on the <clears> bottom <throat> half of that lineup. There's a lot of zeros on the they bottom. They barely half play. Of the it's the same issue that we were talking about DVD like a year or two ago, where it's like, well, they're, they're down. Then they pull McDavid and, and Dryside. They're out there all the time. McDavid and Dryside are out there all the time. It's lines one and two, maybe a sprinkle of line three. Line four doesn't even get out there. But is it a it's chicken just, and egg thing? Are they not playing because they're not producing and not producing because they're not playing? Like at, uh, at some point, they're not, always got to get a point. Yeah, they're that's not true. Right? playing because the top isn't producing. That well, would be my guess. I Ryan McLeod like, needs point, to do way Ryan more. Ryan McLeod has to score a point. Like, Fogel's doing a lot of good work, but eventually put some of those breakaways in the net. He's starting to look a lot like Brad Marchand. When yeah. you put up those 19 mm-hmm. shots yesterday, Marchand, Marchand, if those yeah. third, fourth line, one of them puts in a goal and it makes it 2 nothing for the Oilers. Yeah. With a hockey game, we're talking about at that exactly. point. Exactly. It's a different game. Like there's a moment where... Sometimes those guys, they've had their moments where they've been playing well, and if those guys produce, yeah. maybe it sets things but off more, but they're not even producing that on time. That board, Tom. Tom, you and I could have the same stats as Dylan Holloway right now. Yes, we could, but maybe. we wouldn't look as good doing it. Maybe but yeah, not, we but could. We could. Like, Absolutely. You know, like it's, those, it's, I agree with you. Those guys have to produce. Have Ryan to McLeod, produce. Dylan Holloway, at some point, you got to do something. You got to do something. They're not doing something. No. So it starts, like, there's so many issues right now with this hockey club. You could just pinpoint the one. Like, okay, it's just the one. But there's a lot of lot of issues here. And now, are you going to solve them by firing the coach? Well, who are you going to bring in? Who's out there to bring in? Gerard Gallant is the one I would throw out there. And that this is actually a perfect time to get into Movers and Shakers, brought to you by Marco and Mike Realty, Realty One Group Insiders. Let Marco and Mike earn your trust. Visit MarcoandMike.com for more info on the dynamic duo. Uh, you want a nice, casual experience, just a laid back experience. We're trying to sell or buy a home. Marco and Mike are the duo to talk with. If you make that change with Woodgrove one, you're hoping that one that sends a jolt in the lineup. But Gerard Gallant's the only guy that I look at that goes for the first couple of years, wherever he goes, he gets the most out of his team. Mm-hmm. Then it's gone. Then it, it, the team turns on him. You don't get the, anything out of him. Then you have to make a change on him. But with Vegas, with Florida, with the Rangers, the teams produce, and the teams get a lot out. He gets a lot out of his players. Is that the type of kick in the pants this team needs? Is a coach like that to come in for the rest of the season and next year, where we all know after that he's probably going to get fired because things aren't going to go well no. going into that next season. But is it worth making that move for this season to salvage where this team is at today? Because yeah. what else do you do with all those holes? Yeah. Like, How do you address goaltending? Well, yeah. Is there someone that's going to well, send you I know you a what goalie? people will say. Fire Fire Dustin Schwartz. That's what they always say. Well, that's like firing a hitting coach in baseball. Does Mm -hmm. it really accomplish much? Well, I guess that's that's maybe the way to go below Woodcroft is if you're looking to give sacrificial lambs to the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Do you fire an assistant coach and Schwartz and make a couple changes there and see if things turn? Okay, well, this is what what the reason is. I mean, the the goalies that the Oilers have had the last five six years, you had a Finn that had was six foot seven that was full of holes that he created. And then a 41 year old Jekyll and Hyde, Mike Smith, who was probably the best goalie this team has had since fifth or 16, 17 <laughs> Cam Talbot. Yeah. Outside of that, it's been like, Oh wow. Been, been bad. They haven't drafted well. They haven't developed well. They haven't stolen a goalie from another organization. That's what good organizations do. It's like, we'll take your number three guy lighting it up in the AHL. Right? How much, you know, so... That was supposed to be Cam Talbot. That was, had yeah. a good he had one great year. And then it, yeah. it all just came down. It all, you know, felt... Hey, he was like one of the three stars of the week last week, by the way. He's playing well. The other issue is, is there's no such thing as a consistent goaltender in the NHL, right? Like, you get goaltenders that set the world on fire for a season or two and then lose their game. Like, it is the most unpredictable position that there is in all of sport from year to year to year. For sure. You, just, we, you have to have some help in front of them, and I don't <coughs> think the orders have any help in front of their goalies right now. They're not helping. Putting the puck in your own net doesn't help. No. <laughs> no. no. Uh, so if you're Jeff Jackson, you, you go try to make one move right now. What is that one move that you would go look at making to try to turn this season around? Because it's cup or bust, and right now it's very much close to being bust. Oh, it's we're going bust, and I you know what? First of all, let's establish who's making the calls here. Is it Jeff Jackson? Is it Paul Coffey? Is it Ken Holland? Is it uh, Daryl Cates? Who is pulling the strings? Well, I think we could take Ken Holland out of that. Can we? I would think yeah. so. I think is it dead man, dead GM walking. I think there's that, Pretty and you much. bring in Jeff Jackson, who's the CEO of CEO. hockey, whatever it is. I like. I think he's going to have to get approval for anything he wants from. At the very least, Jeff Jackson. So, it, but it might still be Paul Coffey, too, on. and it might be Cates. Right. Like now, that, right? If, and that, if, that part we don't know. If the final say is Cates, then we're back to Daryl Cates running the, the hockey team. Well, I think Paul Coffey being around is that already. 
Yeah. So maybe that's the issue again. It's probably Kate's right. and Jackson, or not yeah. Kate's, uh, Jackson and Coffee. Jackson is and that not a sign? Like you generally, you know who's making decisions in an organization. Is that not a sign that that this is a problem? Is that we can't pinpoint which of the three? I'm going to take Kate's out of this for a second because the owner's the owner. Mm. But we can't pinpoint who's actually in charge of this club over Jeff Jackson, Paul Coffee, or Ken Holland yeah, right now. That's an issue. Yeah, that's a, that's a serious issue when you have three levels. That no one could even order. report that this is the org chart. Who is this yeah. person? Reports to this person. Reports to this person. Yeah. Reports to Daryl Cates. However, that's. Oh, that's a pretty modern and current situation when you look around the NHL. Like, well, you have a president and GM. <coughs> I know, but, but you know you who's like going. Coffee. But you know, but you the order. look at an organization, organization like the Carolina Hurricanes. Can you tell me who's actually calling the shots on which players get signed and for how much? Don is Waddell it? and that yeah. Tom Dundon. Tom Dundon's Tom a Dundon. meddling, but he's the owner. Right. He's a like, meddling owner. Exactly. And in, yeah. and you look at Vegas and like Vegas to me. Knows how to run a system, but they That's also, also as an owner, that, meddling owner, that right? Yeah. But right. I also know so, that Kelly McCrimmon reports to George McPhee, who reports to Bill Foley. I know Don Waddell right. reports to Tom Dunnan. So, I don't know who reports to Jeff Jackson, who reports to Paul Coffey, well, who reports. I guess my, to, and that's the confusing part my, to me. My my thing would be that we're in Edmonton. We're very close to a situation which can muddy it. Right, like that. If you were in Carolina, I don't know if you would be as secure in understanding the organizational flow chart. Like you go to Vancouver, for example. Like by our definition, that's a team that should be an absolute mess mm -hmm. as far as who's calling the shots. Yes, yeah. but it's working there. So I guess my point is, is that just because we don't know who's calling the shots doesn't mean that it's abnormal in today's NHL. Look at what just happened in Ottawa. Like you had a new owner come in who hired his best friend who then waited for a situation to arise to to fire a very successful general manager. So I mean this this is the modern NHL. You have billionaires who like playing around yep. with toys and that's what NHL hockey teams are now. But I still go to that in all those situations. I could still point to the org chart. I know Steve Steos answers to Ann Lauer, and whoever he hires as GM is going to answer to Steos. Here, you have three guys with high titles. Well, one doesn't even really have a title, like Paul well, Coffey. Well, yeah, Paul, you got Paul Coffey, you got advisor. Jeff Jackson, CEO, yep. and you got President of Hockey Ops, Ken Holland. And I don't know how who's making those final calls. Yep. There's there's three at the very top right. before Daryl Cates, and that's where it's... I don't think just because we're... In, I, I don't think if we're outside of Edmonton, we'd have any more clear answer to this. I could see what all those other organizations, how it looks. Here, I don't see any of that. No, and we that, can't honestly I guess sit that's here my and say... my point, Matt, is that you are a thousand kilometers away from this situation in Ottawa, which clarifies it to you. My guess would be if you were in Ottawa, there would be way more whispers in your ear about how convoluted the situation actually is. The owner's got a oh. kid, or there's a girlfriend with a big mouth, or whatever, right? Like, that because we're so on top of the Oilers... We know all of the rumor yeah. mill that goes along with it, which then clouds the idea of who's actually making the call. Yeah. Well, someone's got to make a call. Someone's got to do something. And what? Okay, so going to happen. Happen. What can't just keep happen. shrugging their shoulders and going, okay, well. If you can make one move. Well, you got to right find a way to make a trade. Maybe yeah. you got to trade, a, you know, a, a big piece. You're not moving nude. He's got no trade clause. I saw his name come up again. Again, no, he's got, got no like, trade clause. He's not going anywhere. It's a hundred... 100 point player with a $5 million contract. Like, why would you? 70 point player, I think 70, 80. Well, he had, he had 100 I, points last year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, I think... but that contract, wait till the last three years of that contract, see how good that looks. Right. And then he's going to be, he could get an 80 point player, 60 point player, 50 point player. That's, and that's you're fine. A 40 point player, if you're telling me that an oiler will actually start and finish his career in one jersey, I'll no. pay the extra. It's never happened. No, it's never it's, happened. It, I get that. I get that. It'll happen. Milan Kittenart played one NHL game. <laughs> only with the Oilers. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> <laughs> nice guy. So, but they've got to do something. And that's why they're paying whatever they're paying Paul Coffey, whatever they're paying Jeff. There's like $10 million worth of executive there. Sure. Yeah. To make a move. Right? Yeah. <laughs> to make a move. The, do something. You guys have to make a move. I. I don't think firing Jay Woodcroft would be the answer. Listen, this is guy. We know Jay has a bit of a, an ego. We know sometimes he, you know, he likes to toy with us. Like we, we, we have a back and forth with Jay. But he earned it with yeah, his winning he, percentage yeah, and how well the team performed. He's got a huge winning percentage. He took over gone. this team. He bailed them out when they fired Todd. Right? Yeah. And they, he bailed with them tip. out. And tip. Yeah. Sorry, tip. Yeah, they bailed them out. Um, and so now, and then he took them to. 
you well, know, he he earned his contract. Yeah, and then you earn your firing, right? Like that's how the NHL works. <laughs> I guess, like, but you're gonna you know, fire a guy after eleven games because things didn't start out well. Like, because he earned because his contract, but he was also coaching the two best players in the NHL. True, he is now coaching the two best players in the NHL, and they are a joke. Well, so they can't. Well, he can't get a save. Yeah, defensively, like you look at this team that Ken put together, Ken Holland put together. Okay. They were good for one year. Maybe they don't have any sustainability. I'm sorry, Darren A is not an NHL defenseman. Like from what I've seen, the first eleven games. Well, he's not an everyday NHL defenseman. No, he's it is, not. It he's is, the number seven. Guy. He should be the number seven. And yeah. Broberg didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, Bouchard is is in a dip now. He's regressed again. It's regressed, unbelievable. Yeah. And so, you know, you got Darnell Nurse. Is he worth what he's being paid right now? No, they no always chance. talk about NHL defensemen. You need two hundred games. Yeah. For for you to actually make a fair evaluation, where is Bouchard at? He's has he he close. must be over the two hundred. Yeah, yeah, I think point. he is. He's, he's, so if that's the case, it's time to make an evaluation. Yeah, yeah he is. So he just he's just making bad reads after bad reads. Like, listen, I I didn't like the read the pinch. One hundred ninety five. That was, a, that was he's a, got five more games. So to he's, turn got five he's got five more games, more games to turn around okay. for you, Will. No, no, I like yeah. that. Yeah, is, I, the I bad thought we might be close. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the bad pinch was something. I think he was gassed. That's why he didn't get back. But he just wasn't. Well, he stopped skating at the blue line. Yeah, like he remember what, when we saw him make that play? Was it against uh, oh Dallas where he just like stopped and watched the guy go? It was Rope yes. Hens going and score. Well, was going he kind of he was like going really hard through the neutral zone, and they got to the blue line, and it was like. Oh, he scored the darn. Yeah. Nils Hoagland. I should have had that guy. He is, yeah. He is not a player who should ever be stopping his feet. Yeah. But so if this is a poor team by Holland, then does he not have to pay the price right here? Well, he's like, is that, and, and if we know he's, he's lame duck going already, to. he's, he's going to like, the price not, already. They haven't, when they ha- you haven't but, renewed your GM. But do you not then have to just get rid of him at this point? Like, it doesn't do anything they could. to their to Yeah, the they room. could. And, pe- and I acknowledge that when people could, say, yeah, get rid of him, but it's not. Could that potentially send a little bit of a shockwave in the dressing room? I don't think they'll react. This is. Okay, if it still doesn't keep going well, further change is going to come. We've gotten rid of this guy who built this team. Bill put you guys all together. We've kicked him out officially. It's just optics. Now, Seriously. I, to me, there's there's two moves. The first move is the AHL airlift. Mm-hmm. Uh, go and pick three names. <laughs> <laughs> bring three names up and pick three names they and just send three did names that. down. Hamblin, Lavoie, and Gagne. Yeah, no, but actual... Gleason, One Picker, of them has to be a goaltender. More. Yeah, one of them has to be a goaltender. You may have to bring up a goalie. And you yeah. need to be then sending a goaltender down. So right? do you start Jack Campbell in San Jose? <laughs> do you want to <laughs> This is win? a funny question. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Because at the start of the year, it was like, who do you start trying to get them work in the main? They were playing okay. And now it's like, oh boy, it's San Jose and... Who actually gives you the best chance to win? I don't know. San Jose is a god awful team, but you can't right? lose to them. Oh, of course not. Because if you lose, no lost to them. <laughs> Woodcroft is done the next day. Oh, you, yes, that's Easily. the one game where yes, if he loses to San Jose, it's over. Like nope. that Friday, get ready because that's what we're discussing. You cannot He's gone. lose to that. And see, that, horrible that was the when Nash- you're in this that was team. the Nashville game for me. Like you lose to Nashville, and it's time to like you don't you don't get to it's have any name. sacred cows, right? Like yeah. You you lose to a team that you have literally owned on the schedule for as long as you have with that line. Like Drysaddle has basically had been able to do whatever he wants to that Nashville Predator yeah. squad, and when that doesn't happen, that's your panic point. And so we're already past the panic. We're past point. that. Yeah. Okay. With that. the heat cranked up to where it is, the you, one of the moves you can make, like we've acknowledged, is getting rid of the coach. And this is just a weird thing. Wouldn't it be? I don't know what the right term is, but if if they lose to San Jose, which is pathetic, although it's already but it's been a pathetic now. season. Todd McClellan got fired in San Jose when he was the Oilers head coach. They flew to San Jose. They were going to play the Sharks. They fired him before that game. Mm-hmm. And Hitch came out. And Hitch and came out. And here we are, you know, well, that was 2018. Yep. Uh, five years later. Todd McClellan's understudy, Jay Woodcroft, who took this team to success, is going into San Jose, and this could potentially be it if maybe they lose. Like, that's just, it's just weird. What a weird coincidence yeah, that would no, be. be. Yeah, I guess that's the term, just yeah. the way it all works. And I'm like, this is messed up. So, if that's the way it goes. And maybe it does. I don't know. I don't but, think it will. 
I, I, I can okay. I cannot, <laughs> see, I cannot see the order. You're not even saying that. Was certain, and, and that's like, the thing. Like it's it's hard to be. I can't a, even a real confident. Have you seen San Jose? They gave I up know. ten goals to the Canucks. They gave up ten goals. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not a real. Like, they're NHL not team. an NHL team. Yeah. They're absolutely horrendous. I'll, I'll go as far like the Oilers shouldn't win this game. They should dominate this. They game. should win this game they by should, ten goals. Yeah, should be a game where they're they come out yeah. and they win by three, four, five yeah. goals, like and absolutely kick the bleep out yeah. of the Sharks. To try to show, okay, we, we got to turn this around. Yeah. And if they win like a 3 2 hockey game or something, yeah. I'll actually be a little disappointed oh, because it was like this was this opportunity to try to really get your season going. Yeah. And did you do that enough? Yeah. And I don't know if although, you did. Although a team that a game that's in the balance in the final 10 minutes might be healthier for this squad. I, that's a very good point. Right? Like, <laughs> maybe uh, but learning how to shut it, a game if down. If it's yeah. in the balance against San Jose, then you, then you get some serious. Let's say 4 2. Yeah. It, maybe that's enough pressure yeah. to actually have a learning moment there in the final like a 4-1 minutes. hockey game shark score sometime yeah. in the third it's 4-2 yeah. Oilers then lock yeah. it down defensively yeah. Yeah. when the game go on to Seattle because yeah a 9-1 win I don't think this team learns anything from a 9-1 win no but sometimes you need those sure yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. you need to just you know kick someone when they're down so yeah like beating a baby seal that's what yeah yeah <laughs> <is. Like, laughs> um, yeah, there's yeah, there's so many, so many issues right now. And is there a move with this team if they lose just one of their next two, or do they have to lose <clears throat> both for something to kind of happen? Like, where are we when it comes to when that move uh, this, should come? This team needs to win seven straight for you to not mm. make a move. Yeah, you right. have to make a move. I think right now something like, has got to give. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't think that there is an off switch to that panic that's basically been hit. Until this team is approaching 500. Yeah. Like we had the conversation yesterday, and you asked the question, should they fire Jay Woodcroft? The answer is no, they shouldn't fire Jay Woodcroft, but they might have to. Yeah. To make that move, to, to hit that shock. Like that's where it's at. Yeah. But who do you bring in? Do you give the team to Glenn Gallagher? Do you give the team to Dave Manson? Gully's coach. Kind of like the goaltending. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like when you have it like if if you're sitting there going, Well, you can't fire Jay Woodcroft because he's a good coach, but this team misses the playoffs, who cares? Cause he'll be fired then. Yeah. Yeah. What's right? the chance it's Mac T? Well, it, won't sure. Mac it won't be Mac T. He's in California right now. <laughs> yeah. and oh my God, that, that's but, so but, convenient. But D, but D, <laughs> there we go. See? Oh my God. It, it's but all DVD lining up. isn't that lucky. It's all lining up. It's, they lose to San Jose Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Craig McTavish oh, in California is unveiled as the next I, Oiler coach. Yeah, the media oh is not that lucky to get a second chance oh, with Craig oh McTavish. God. Third, in a sense. Third would be Yeah, because yeah, he yeah. technically the they gave him the third chance in that sense. But... Oh I still my think God. there's not a co- better post game head coach than Craig McTavish. No, he, he was, was a great he guy. Was great. Yeah. He was a great guy. Yeah, so, yeah there's not yeah. a lot of options. But there's an option. Like, like, forget about Joel Quinnreal. He's not coming back. Especially with the story that came out this weekend yes. of a second allegation. Second allegation. Like, yes. No yes. Second chance. It's over. Um, so it's Gallant. It's Mac T. Because I'll just throw that one out there. It's <laughs> Gulletson. Or Manson. I think if Woodcroft goes, I think Madsen goes. Yes, I think yeah, that would kind of. Time. I think that would be the well. The maybe Manson might go. It's defensively right now. The team is a shambles. Well, maybe it's him and and Dustin Schwartz is what yeah. the Oilers look at. Yeah. The sacrificial yeah, lambs. There's just, defense. There's yeah. goaltending. Send that out Death there. Bring someone else cuts, in. That's what that is. Uh, <laughs> I'm well, just that, trying to that think. That was a line he stole from Bruce Shirelli's. Boudreaux. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I think he's kind of retired. Him said, but Elaine Vigneault, we went over yesterday. He's, but he's, he's retired. He also and, said he's retired. And again, Which we're like bad, throwing out retreads, Elaine right? Vigneault Elaine Vigneault would be great right now. That's a good coach. We're, we're throwing we're, out retreads again. Remember, that's what like, you're, because going in the offseason because in, you in, can't do but that's that what, young coach in, right now. This team isn't in, in a position gets you. Yeah, this you're not in a position right now that you can go find the young up and coming coach. You just kind of did somewhat with Woodcroft. You need someone True. to come in that you kind of has the experience to be like, okay, we need to turn the ship around quick here, right now, and not Daryl Sutter. No, it's not no, a Sutter. No, no, it's it's Sutter. Not, talk. Sutter. not you want to really torpedo your franchise? Bring that guy in. Here. Uh, if you, the other one is Mike Babcock. That that torpedoes yeah, your that franchise. Torpedoes your that, franchise. That, that's also over. I, I will say this: yeah. the Oilers are lucky that everything happened with Columbus and Mike Babcock. Yes. If they don't hire him. This past summer, and oh, all yeah, that the others, are the others are hiring Mike Babcock right now. They joined with that idea before I know. they brought in Woodcroft, and exactly. the players said the players said no. no yeah, but if they're mas. playing the way they are right now, yeah. it's not you don't think Ken that. Holland trying to save his job? I don't think Ken Babcock? Holland's making the call. I don't think he's making the call, and I think he sees the writing on the wall. And yeah. Ken Holland's like, I'm out of here at the end of the year. Hey, anyway, have you noticed Ken Holland as much around the the rink like previous years? Because I haven't. 
He's kind of just been quiet. Yeah, he's just been quiet. Yeah. And he, I think he knows. Yeah. You know, if they haven't come to you, say, hey, do you want, should we talk contract for next year? And there? They haven't done that with him. And so he knows well, what except the that He's was. also made it pretty clear that he he's fulfilled. He's happy with retirement. Well, no, I think he wants to stay. He wants to see this through. He's got Connor McDavid for three years. He's got Leon Dreisaitl for three years. I think he wants to see this through. Yeah. He wants to finish the job here. And if it's not this year, he wants to try next year. If not next year, the year after that. Yeah. And, I, and and they're not they're not even entertaining that right now. No, and they got rid of his right-hand man in Tyler Wright, bringing mm-hmm. Rick Pracy. Like, yeah. that was a sh- signal. We are shifting philosophy. Yeah. This is the start of the change. Yeah. And so, and then now to us, that's another thing we got to talk about. Leon Dreisaitl's and, you know... Two years left on his contract. You think he's coming back here? McDavid has three years. That's why they hired Jeff Jackson, so they can keep McDavid longer around. What happens with him? Now now you got to start asking those questions about your future. If but this team tanks this year, If oh these God, guys I, I, walk, it's <clears throat> their doing. Yeah. Who's right. not producing right now, aside from the bottom six? The two big dogs. Yeah. They're having a bad year. Yeah. Well, they're putting up points. I think, But they're not putting up well, points. They're not saying doing. GM McDavid hasn't been great either. No. The players that McDavid is supposedly like has encouraged to come here hasn't panned out no. James largely Neal. when it comes to the players. And that hasn't gone well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that was Movers and Shakers brought to you by Marco and Mike Realty, Realty One Group Insider. Buying or selling, give Marco and Mike the old PTO contract. Let them prove to you why they're the best team for the job. Marco and Mike.com. This is the EST Hango presented by Mots Clamato Caesar, Derek Van Deest, Will Fraser, Tom Gazzola, Matt Awanek with you here. Um, but yeah, like McDavid hasn't been the best GM. Um, kind of like the LeBron-esque type thing mm-hmm. with his moves. But, yeah, the, like, this is the first time I in their time here that I think there's real concern they don't stay. Yeah. Because to me it was always, they're not going to leave if this is a playoff. Why would games. they leave? I think I no no like no, no, sorry yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. in their career here oh, with the Oilers like the I, whole time I, here I've always felt they're going to resign they're going to resign this team's starting to make the playoffs they're, they went to a conference final this you don't leave at that point you don't leave to something else where you're going to have the other player you're going to be able to play with. But if you miss the playoffs now, their goal is cup. And you can't win a cup if you don't make the playoffs. So this is the first time in their careers as Oilers. I actually sitting here going legitimately, can they re-sign these guys? Yeah. Why especially it's, Leon? Although Winnipeg went through the exact same situation. Yeah. Right? Connor Halbuck's gone. They can't compete for a Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. You know, Shifley, he'll be gone. So I think that that is fan and media generated. I don't know if that is actually you don't in the think, dressing room. How generated. much money do you think a team will throw Leon Drysaddle into? How much t- money can you throw? Yeah, into I, the uh, I make a lot of no, but like, how much money can you actually throw? Like, if you are a team that is on the cusp of getting to the Stanley Cup final, mm-hmm. how much money do you have in reserve? To go big game hunting on well, the free agent market. It, depending on the GM you have, so depending on the teams. No, no, you, like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying you could go sign him for 14 15 and you make moves to get rid of cap to bring him in. Sure. If I have the ability to bring Leon Drysettle, I'm making a couple moves yeah. to free up that space. I have all summer. I could be over the cap X amount in the regular, no, no, in the like, summer. I'm not, so I'm making that move. I'm not saying that it's impossible. No. I'm saying we don't see it. Well, I haven't looked at the people's caps. Right. Years. Like you look at it. So the, 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 the typical team that you'd look at would be Las Vegas. Las Vegas is no. in major problems yeah. with their cap and will be for the foreseeable future and also will start to fall off because they have, they have, I mean, you think the Oilers system is bad as far as producing talent. Vegas has nobody because they've just been trading it away. So, I mean, is it going to be the Montreal Canadiens? If you're Leon Dreisaitl and you've spent your career in Edmonton and you're like, I just want to go play hockey, mm-hmm. you're not choosing the Montreal Canadiens. No. So, like, I, I agree this is the risk, but this is the risk for every team with a true superstar. Mm-hmm. Is oh, that always. they could go decide to take less money and go somewhere else, but they're not going to make more money going anywhere else. You're always going to make the most that, money sticking Leon's around. Leon's going to get number one money. He's got number two money here, and he always will as long as he's with Connor McDavid. He can go somewhere else and get number one money. If he keeps playing well and has seasons like he yeah. did the last few, he's going to get more than yeah. Matthews. That's yeah. Matthews set the bar for Dreisaitl, he basically. Did. He did. Yeah, Matthews. Dreisaitl's yeah. a better player than Matthews. And yeah. Look at the, the contract. And that's the I, contract that Dreisaitl's going to get. I think the idea of a Dreisaitl or a McDavid signing an eight-year contract is probably what's not going to happen. I think you will see these guys probably resign like a dry sidle, but it'll be a three year contract. It'll be that sort of like, yeah, I'll stick around. And if it doesn't work out, 
then I'm out of here yeah. chasing something. But if you want to pay me $13 million to stick around on a three year contract, yeah. I'll well, do that's that. what they have to pay them. They'll yeah. have to pay them what they're paying. I'm just, I just pulled up like LA has 37 million in cap space that year 37.7 million. Right, because they're a developing team that is going to have a whole bunch of RFAs that are going to... Yeah, they do well, have Kopitar those RFAs, but... the books then, and then they can go and get Dreisaitl. What a perfect uh, replacement. Kopitar would still be there for one more year. Yeah. I think, if I'm looking at this yeah. correctly. Yeah, or for seven million. perfect replacement for but Andre like the, So, like, there, there are certain teams that... And right. the cap should start, maybe by then, going up slightly. It goes up four mil next year. That it's, it goes up four it's, mil next year, there. and it'll probably go up significantly so, the yeah. year after that. Yeah, it's just this team, if you're a playoff team, they're, they're not going anywhere. And they generally don't go anywhere. We can look at Calgary and what happened with their guys. That's the outlier. Yeah, but that doesn't happen. What happened with People Calgary is they stay. looked up a highway and said, uh, yeah. I have no interest in sticking around getting my head caved in by Connor McDavid yeah. for the next five years. Actually, so here's is what's happening to the Oilers because of what Vegas did in the playoffs last year. We saw what happened to the Flames last year. Golden Knights did to the Oilers. Because the Oilers destroyed the Flames. And one of the stories last year with the Flames was the Oilers took the spirit of them. It crushed them, and that led yeah. to their season last year. No, I as think much what happened Darryl. to the Oilers is that they but, wasted their offseason trying to figure out who was in charge in their front office, and, and no not. one made an actual call on their goaltending. Well, they And all the players in that room came into camp and saw the same two goaltenders, and are they are absolutely as fragile as any minor league team out there right yeah, now. Yeah, right now, the, it starts in net, and they're yeah. not getting the saves. God, you know they're not getting a lot of things. Yeah, saves, but solid defense. They're not from believing that they scoring are goals. scoring the goals. Yeah. The, the number thing. one power play being as deadly as it once was. It's now tenth or whatever. It came into last night ninth. I would say the PK, coaching even's not there. The PK went three for six yesterday. Yeah, three for six. Yeah. The PK has basically given up a goal minimum every game every this game. season. The PK is it's atrocious. Which also come, the PK. But, that's but that, uh, well, I was about to say, that's goal. the that's thing is your best penalty <laughs> killer is your goalie. Yeah. And, but, and well, you know, every other team gets the goalie. Yeah. And, you know, the Oilers get goalied by everyone. When are the Oilers going to yeah. goalie someone else? That's the thing. When How are they the going to get that goalies? game they where we sit there in and go? When they put up a bunch of goals in a game. Like, they don't have that moment where the team is struggling in a game or things are not going their way, and the goalies are standing on their head making save after save after save to keep them in it, like Demko did yesterday in the first yeah. X amount of time. Demko did it. And, and then, then it turns the game around, and boom, now the Canucks can take over. In Nashville, they were already up the Oilers. It happened against and Dallas when Dallas had nothing left in the tank in the last 10 minutes of that hockey game. And the Scott Wedgwood them. did that. Scott Wedgwood shut him out, right? They, Dallas had nothing left, and the Oilers were coming at him. There's a second game of a back-to-back. Uh, yeah. And they couldn't beat Scott. Third and four nights for the Stars that game, too. It was unbelievable. And so, yeah, so you need your goalie to do that for you sometimes. And I think the Oilers, you can look back, and they've had it once in that game in Nashville. Kevin Lankinen had a nice Saturday afternoon here in Edmonton. (laughs) (laughs) Kevin Lankinen. Casey DeSmith. Scott Wedgwood. What the hell is going on here? There's an issue here. Jonathan Quick. Yeah. Jonathan Quick. He looked like the Jonathan Quick of 10 years ago. Yep. Like, come on, guys. Seriously. They gave well, you Jonathan Quick and you couldn't beat him. That's the funny part of this, too, is that the Oilers, one, you're getting the backup of other teams. Yeah. Which is one thing. They're telling you about how you're playing right now, that they're giving the backup. But, two, that's prime for you to take advantage of. Yeah. You are this high-scoring team. Is great. Like, this is the time to get your wins. Teams are helping you, giving you a little edge. And you've instead allowed the goalie look like a Vesna winner, yeah. eat t- game in and game out. Yeah. So that's an issue. That's in it. Can't yeah. keep getting goalied. I'm sorry. I don't. That's not an excuse to me anymore. Oh, they're. Goalied. But where are the shots goalied. coming from? Well, that's right? what we get like, at. Are they hard enough in front of the net? Are they? Are they, you're, you? You got to bear down in front of the well, net. You got 19 <laughs> shots and one goal. There's. That's an issue. Look at Sam Gagne's goal a couple nights ago. Yeah. Went to the net. How many times this year have you seen the Oilers fully go do well, that? Well, they kicked one in last night. <laughs> <laughs> that they did. That they did. did. Right in the crease there. You could and you could tell for when he's yeah. just like, eh, uh, yeah, I, I, I kicked it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know people were complaining. Like he literally kicked, he kicked it, it in. It yeah. So yeah, but but yeah, they, by the way, dumbest the, rule in all of hockey. No, Kicking? it's not. Yeah. It's not because you don't want guys kicking people, people skates flying in the crease like that. You don't want a goalie like this and have some guy cut his fingers because he's kicking at the puck. It's not that dumb rule. It's a safety and it's issue. It's a tough one. It, like, it's a I get, like, when I see the one last night, I go, how's that not a goal? 
like with what because he, he went did. like this. I, he didn't do much, and I, I know it wasn't but as far. But he it's so like hard he, to have a gray rule when it comes to a blade on yeah. the bottom of the feet of guys going as fast as they I, are. I, I, I just don't want. I just don't want guys kicking kicking at the puck in the crease. That just. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're asking for trouble. I, you're asking for I think trouble. You're asking, for I, trouble. I, asking for trouble. I, I disagree. Like, you're gonna have like there are, there are rules on follow through of your stick. Like mm-hmm. they have addressed the yeah. idea that like yeah. you walking around with a blade <laughs> is a dangerous thing as well, especially for guys' mm-hmm. eyes. I think you could probably have something very similar yeah, I I when just, it comes to skates yeah. in a crease. I don't have a problem with that rule, and they. You know, if it goes off your skate, if you can redirect it, whatever, as long as you're not. I like the redirect and that they've changed that to allow you to. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing is you can boot the puck and as long as it touches a stick and goes in, it's good. I guess, like but that, I just think, I think I just if don't the think blade they, stays on the ice, I think maybe can you get away with that guys, scraping They just it? don't want guys in a mad scramble in front of the crease. They don't, yeah. they don't want guys getting, getting that, that blade in the air. Yeah, especially like when guys go down to try yeah, to do something. Yeah. If guys are laying on the ice and you're going to go just kick start a quick kicking like that. Yeah, but I'm with you. Like I see but the can't last that night just goal. Be a penalty? Like, <laughs> like can't you just address that by being like you were being dangerous with your skate? Like, I would I would think that that is just something you can address with penalties because we address. Other dangerous plays with penalties. It's kind of the nature of yeah. the beast, right? Like, because yeah, you can have a dangerous play that paralyzes someone, but with the blade, you could also like. It's not to the extent, it's but we saw what sport, happens. I guess is my point yeah. from a you know last week out in England with Adam Johnson. Like, those are sharp tools. Yeah, <laughs> you know, literally. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want them coming off the ice more than they yeah. should. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that rule. Yeah, don't kick the puck. That's where you have a stick. I, I just hate anything that eliminates right. offense. No, I get that. I get that, but I don't know. that's what the stick is a lot for. of text. Yeah. Parrish Drew is inbox, 780-218-9999. Where do you want to go? I'll read this one just to start. No one is saying engagement. No name on this text. No one is saying engagement. When you're engaged, you take the player's stick away. You don't lose your man. You win puck battles. You communicate on the ice and bench. Not too many men penalties when everyone's engaged. They were looking at game 83. I don't disagree with this text. No name on the text. Again, hit us up if you're new to the text line. Uh, Put a name on that so we can give you credit. But we've talked about lack of execution. Engagement, I think, is the umbrella over top of lack of execution. That, that was something we harped on big time, pre- and post-game show, uh, the first five games. And then this, this season just went completely sideways after that. We thought maybe they would have bounced back after the Heritage Classic two Sundays ago. Um, and it's just fallen by the wayside again. So engagement is, is fair. That's a fair comment, I think, from that texter. I, I, part of me thinks that this team has had a long time trouble getting over that game five in, in Las, Las Vegas last year. Okay. That was the game. And that, and that goes back to my point with like yeah. a question of, did, did the Golden Knights destroy yeah. this team a little maybe, bit? Maybe they did, or, or just like the Oilers are just so focused on, that was the game. That was the game where they needed Sewer Center to make a save. You're 3-2 in a second. You're yeah. rolling. They didn't get it. And I think you're right. I think it's kind of unraveled since then, and they haven't been able to get over that. And then they realize, man, we're right back at the start. Now we have to go and you know do all this work But that again. should fuel and, them. It yes, feels, it's it, a long yeah. road, and and yes, it's a pain in the ass to play eighty two, and should. no, it's not easy, and you get hurt yeah. and crap happens along the way. But you should be pissed off that you lost, and that should motivate you. No, Championship tour. That. It should. Yeah, it should. I, I, I think you might be onto something. This might be a a Peyton Manning idiot kicker yeah. sort of scenario where. Once you lose faith in that key of a position, yeah. it's tough for you to like ever get it back. If you keep seeing that same name on the back of the jersey at the start of the hockey game. And yeah, I, I wonder if their leadership core made their mind up in that game five about their goaltending yeah. and nothing's going to change it. Nothing, you know, and it was, you know, 880, whatever save percentage in the playoffs, I ain't going to win anything. Yeah. And now neither goalie has a save percentage over nine now. Like it's going to take a lot to get them over against, too. Like four. Yeah, it's just Above, horrific. That's right. Like they even Stuart Skinner. Oh, I let in six goals last. That's it. I can't do that. Yeah, you can't let in six goals. I don't care how they you can't let in four. Campbell let in two and what? How many seconds was it? 
on Saturday, right? With the the re- the oh. replay, like there's two goals oh, right yeah. away, two like two within like, like a ten second like, sequence. Like that to the same guy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. He scored two hat tricks in the same game. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's just yeah. that's kind of where that's they are. And but how many years have we been talking goaltending is a problem here in Edmonton? Right. We didn't talk about it for yeah. You're right. Cantalbo was here. Roly for a little bit. But it's always been an issue because the orders don't draft, they don't develop. Well, no, and they, they, don't they draft and develop. It's just, it's it's a voodoo position, man. Like, uh, I, But as we were talking, I don't know, I, I think it was before we were on the air, or was yeah. it on the air? The Canucks could but do the it. The Canucks. The Canucks the can, can do and, it. And once upon a time, the Oilers did it as well, right? Yeah, like, yeah. it's, it's kind of like quarterbacks in football. There are certain teams that just have that magic fairy dust and they can sprinkle it into their organization and people are going to try and claim that it's coaching which i'm sure is part of it Mm -hmm. but i think it's also like there is no sport that is determined by luck more than hockey and that's been analyzed like that is a provable fact and at a certain point you become unlucky and right now this oilers squad is unlucky when it comes to their goaltenders Uh, but they are also they are also fearful yeah. In making the big yeah. leap, like yeah. I, I think back, and then I'm. I, this makes me feel old. I think back to that year that the Calgary Flames went through eight goaltenders due to injury, and ended up with Freddie Brathwaite, who came out of nowhere. He'd been playing <laughs> with the Canadian Olympic squad, and they brought him in, and all of a sudden he solidified a position yeah. that had been an absolute quicksand, and that was just next guy up type of situation. And if you're the Edmonton Oilers, why are you not employing something similar well, to who's that? Who's the best goalie not playing in the NHL right now? It's Dustin Wolf. Yeah. Every Flames. Yeah. Two-time AHL player of the year. Goalie of the year last year. They're not yeah. going to give him up. No. But they want to move Vladar because so they want to make room for Wolf. Right? Like, you got to find that guy. You got to find someone else's number two, number three guy that's not playing. That's how they found Tam Kelp. Cam Talbot. I also right? think you need to, then this is just my personal opinion. I think you need to go hunting in bad organizations. You need to find the. Well, they could be claimed think, as one of those. Well, no, but I. No, they're, they're a good team that's playing bad. I'm talking about finding bad teams where goaltenders have learned to rely on one person, and that's themselves. I think that's what you see with Thatcher Demko. That's what you've definitely seen with Vancouver Canucks is that those are goaltenders who come in looking at a Tyler Myers going, I guess it's on me. Yeah. Like they, and they have that self-reliance that the goaltenders in Edmonton do not and never have had is a sense of self-reliance. They have a, we need better communication and you need to take your, and you take the shoe and yeah. They're they're half the time they're they're spending coaching other players instead of just worrying about their crease. Flip side, that player comes here and they go, "Oh, I don't have to be the guy now." McDavid and you're right, and, that, and Leon are in front of me. That may be part uh, of it this too. This is going to be much yeah. better for me. That may be and part also of it that, too. That mentality that got them to it maybe goes away because they're in Edmonton because there's those two guys there. Yeah, the curse of having two great players, if you will. What if now the perception changes because of how bad this yeah, team exactly. is? The best is like, oh, okay, those guys might score and they should score, yeah. but it's coming. <laughs> back the other way it's and it's not going to be pretty there's going to a lot of be odd man yeah. rushes my way yeah. and i yeah. better be on yeah. my game because exactly. it's going to get in the back of the net yeah and they're not back checking like that's a, <laughs> they're, they're like, kind of back there's checking. the second goal where i think two guys made a flyby and left the guy alone in the slot it's like uh, the I think it was like Fogel and the D-man yeah, and they both D-man kind of were flew by the guy up. in the slot yeah and got the puck in the slot it's like it's not whatever defensive system they're it's not clicking it's not yeah going well so and pew Suter, let's not kid out he's a sniper in this league <laughs> i'm joking for those that didn't see my look to the camera that was yeah, a total joke. that was wow yeah yeah Can't, you know just yeah you gotta you gotta make those saves. That, that the first and you saw it coming you could see it coming like last night yeah they had 19 shots one goal it was like Everybody, I think I even tweeted out, we know what's coming. It's coming. They're going to get let the bad goal in, and they're going to be either tied or down going into the first intermission. Oh. Can you believe? I, I just, that Canucks room last night when I spent, can you believe we're up 3-1? Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's a great feeling. <laughs> yes, it is. It, it would be. It would be a great we feeling going into totally the second period. Played, boys, but we're up 3-1. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's go. Well, and we beat this twice game. already this it's, year. It's you know, playing let's with house money, right? Yeah. Like, it's it, it allows you to 
just relax at that point. And they, they did. They just relaxed yeah. into the rest I, of the I, game. Can that, the Canucks have a good team. Like, they're playing well. They're, they're playing they well. Really they got are. a good team. You know, Credit Ben to Hughes talk is you. the real deal. Pedersen's the real deal. 780-218-9999. Kurt on a grader says, Mac T was on Oilers now with our dear friend Bob Stoffer. Uh, this was last night. And said, the reporters are too hard on the team and the fans should just cheer. Saravalli came on after and ripped him for it. <laughs> As Frank should. Uh, but that sounds like Mac being That's Mac T. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's He's <laughs> got buddies still in the organization. Yeah, like, no, he's close. No. Like, I, and, and, and like I can imagine, if you're a coach, uh, you that's what you'd want. Now, I, I think Mark, if Jay would like to have, would not like Mark asking those questions last night, right? Like, but well, there are questions that need Jay to be asked. Jay doesn't like to be questioned at all. Right, but any he, coach. He, he'll come back. And that's any coach, any team. They would love to have just everyone praise them and yeah, give them yeah. love. So I could see the coach, Mac T, saying that. Yeah, like it yeah. No, Jay did sense. not like. I. It's funny because Mark Spector wanted Bouchard benched after that mistake. and Among I, others. Uh, among others. Wanted him <laughs> yeah, 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 he wanted him benched. <laughs> um, and I could see where he's coming from, but I just... I don't, there's no, I guess that there's no accountability, but you're playing. Man. Well, he's got and five that, games. And he's got five more games. He's got five more games to get to 200. And then we figure out who Evan Bouchard is. Yeah, figure out. Um, I, yeah, but I think, I think and then that this comes to Ken Holland not supplying Woodcroft with the ability to make roster moves properly. Well, that's that's an issue. And that's what this guy, that like that it's, issue. you could sit there and say, Jay needs to hold his players a little more accountable, but it's how. Yeah. How can he hold some of these players more accountable if he can't do anything? There's not enough players here yeah. to mm-hmm. field an actual team on the ice, yeah. let alone having guys in the press you, box. You can't healthy scratch anyone. You can't, you know, it's it's tough to bench a guy for a shift or two and you're already down a player. Like it just yeah. it's hard to Maddie pointed it out yesterday. The comment Jay made last week. He, where he said something along the lines, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matty. No, it, I'm using the players that are available to me. Yeah. Jim Matheson yeah. asked about when Connor Brown got hurt, saying he had 11 forwards going down to 10, and he was going to ask how difficult was it. And mm-hmm. before he can finish his question, Woodcroft immediately stopped him and said, "That wasn't my choice. Right, I was, you know, I had to do 11." And he, you, you know, it. He's very careful with words. He knows what he's saying. Yeah. And for him to immediately point, it's his fault, not mine. Yeah. Well, that shows a disconnect to me in that organization. Well, it's true, but then also he's, he's also has three, lack a, of leadership. three <laughs> AHL players in his lineup right now. Yeah. Okay, let's be honest. There's three AHL players in his lineup, right? Lavoie would be on this team if they could have 23 men on the roster. Maybe, Ga- yeah. Maybe Ga- he'd Gagne, be like the, yeah. yeah. Gagne has been is, good, though, sadly. Gagne's been good, right? But yeah, Hamlin's, Hamlin, to me, is a tweener. Yeah, he's always he's a guy who's been good at the AHL. Just does can't fill that gap. Yeah. Great story though, Edmonton kid. We acknowledge that. Yeah, we absolutely. That. Yeah, for sure. Great story. He's living the dream. Hopefully, he does well. But right now, you know, you look at that bottom half of that roster, and you know, Ryan McLeod has fallen off the cliff. I'm sorry, like, he missed I, training yeah. camp. I, I I appreciate the idea that the bottom half of a roster has to do something. But when the top half of your roster has the but players that we, it has, we're, we're not asking them to do something. We're asking them to do anything. Yeah, but right, they're not doing anything. I, right I now. just think you are looking in the wrong area. This is not a team that is losing one goal hockey games, and you're just asking for that bottom half to do their fair share. This is a team that is getting blown out by scores of six to two, with a Connor McDavid and a Leon Drysital healthy, supposedly in the lineup. And so those are the guys that wear the letters. Those are the guys that make all the money that doesn't allow you to have the depth in your organization. And so if that's the case, that's where the blame goes. Yeah. If this until, is a 500 hockey team, in, we could look at the bottom six. Until think, you look at the stats but, and you go, well, Connor McDavid's on pace for 150 points this year. He can't do anything else. That's when you can stop asking about what the top, top half is doing and start focusing on the bottom half. But right now... They're not on pace for those numbers, and so that's where you're. So you don't hold the bottom half accountable. You're saying, "Here, I'm paying you two and a half million dollars. Don't worry that you don't have won any points this year." But, but I can then say, you're, pay, we're pay, "You're paying Connor McDavid twelve point five and Leon eight point five, and I, you're not giving the production that you're supposed to be giving." Yeah, I, I like the, I the think blame has to go all around. The but, tail wagging the dog is what I think it is. I I think the bottom of you have. Bottom half of your roster follows the top half, not the other way around. And when your top half isn't doing anything, it doesn't give any time or opportunity or anything for your bottom half to even get involved in a hockey game because you have to keep rolling out that top half of the lineup to try and do something. But again, it's a chicken and egg thing. Why do you have to keep rolling out the top half of the lineup? Because the bottom half 
isn't doing anything. Well, like, if that's the, the bottom thing. half is doing the something, but the top half the is top expected half. to do more. The top oh, grand, half is grand, expected grand. to put a lot, and they're not doing that. Yeah. And if they're not doing that, it's hard to then sit there and say the bottom six should be doing more when the top bottom top six isn't doing it either. And I think is that kind of yeah, where you're going? Like, like it's if if this team was five hundred and. And had Connor just and Leon lost were still scoring goals, game. and the bottom six yeah. wasn't producing. We could all look at the bottom six right now and go, "This is why they're not higher in the division." But they're at the bottom of the NHL right now with the two two of the best players yeah. in hockey. That's kind of where they're not producing, and it starts with your leaders on the way down. And it just seems like I'm with you more. As a 31st pace club, it's hard to just give the top guys a pass. Well, I'm not giving the top. No, no, guys no, I know, pass. but. I would, to me, they get more of the target right now because they should be, like, this team's only scoring two goals a game. Yeah. That's not, we're not, that's not just because of the bottom six. That's because your top well, guys they are in not with scoring. A goal every the now power and then plays maybe not be three goals a game, right? They, they got to chip in every now and then. Mm -hmm. I, I don't give them yeah. pass. Yeah. They got to chip. Derek Ryan's not doing anything. I'm 100%. sorry. 100%. Right? Uh, before Yammer got hurt, he wasn't doing anything. McLeod's not doing anything. Like, those guys are not doing anything. Like, do something. Uh, and I think that's that's an issue right there. That's like, part of the problem. Guys, for an hour, we've gone over every element of this team, okay? We've talked about management. We've talked about executive management. We've talked about the special teams. We've talked about the goaltending. We've talked about the defense. We've talked about the bottom six. We've talked about the top six. We've talked about the elite in the top six. Not a single one management. of those have actually lived up to expectation. No. Through and through... This organization is failing thus mm -hmm. far this season. And and we're, yeah. we're trying to put emphasis on it's the goalies, it's the bottom six, it's the top six. Basically, the whole team is effing this up. The whole organization is yeah. effing up this season. Except PP2. Except for power play two. <laughs> Great point. <laughs> well you, done, boys. Power you play did two, it, power play two. Goals. That's why you you're not 30 second, you're yeah. 31st. Doubled their production from Well last done, PP2. Well done. Uh, but seriously, like we've been right. We've been well, fighting over which element and component of this organization is screwing up this season mm -hmm. more and sewering it more. Mm -hmm. Every single component that we've described, top to bottom, people on the ice, people off the ice. They not have, meeting expectations. Yeah, that's been a they have their Basically, that's tire what fire. we've talked about for a full hour. Yeah. Well, so then there's only one other thing we actually really haven't discussed, and that's the actual leadership of this team. Do they have the right guys? Like, Connor McDavid's a great hockey player. So is Leon Dreisettle. But are they truly leaders? Well, what's changed I, like, in that just, leadership group from a team that had 105, 105 points last year? From last year? What has changed from last year is no Clem Costin, no Nick Bukestad. So the bottom six guys. No Yamamoto. Um, no no Yamamoto. Yeah. And who was the last one you said? Pugliarvi. Pugliarvi. Well, I wouldn't put any of those guys into into the leadership category. Right. And so... No, I, Ryan I, Murray. I think the asking if they're the right leadership guys, well, they were. So, so the, is it possible that that's no. changed? And maybe. No, I think, I think you get the right leadership. Like, Connor yeah. looked like a man possessed for the first half yeah. of that period, mm -hmm. the first half of that game. Right? He's like, I'm going to take this team on my back, and I'm going to yeah. do anything. Look at, look at, the, and he was, he was all over the ice. He's like, okay, he looks. But perhaps you know? Connor and Leon need to learn that that passion and intensity needs to then translate w when there's no one in the stands, right? Like that you need to be holding guys accountable to the time that they're putting in, in the film room, to the time that they're putting in nutrition. What Like, like you hear stories of those great Detroit Red Wing squads about how the culture pervaded yeah. everything. And that there was no off days in practice or anything like that. And so I don't know. I can't speak to whether or not that's the case or not. But it can't just be the game time leadership. It actually has to be the non-game time leadership that becomes even more important. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And I don't know. Like, we all played the sports. How much did you need to be motivated by a leader? Like, you Cons have to find Considering the level that I played at? A lot. No, I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> you, sometimes you got to find it. I really could have right? benefited from some you're, better leadership. You're in the NHL. <laughs> you're in the NHL. And maybe you got fire burns within. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Right. So. But then there's always the story is the great teams have the great leadership group that keep everyone going and keep everyone uh, accountable. And it's why they are successful. Yeah. Think about how much better you'd like, have been on the pitch if Lionel Messi had been your teammate. <laughs> I just would have given him the ball. <laughs> Get on the ball. You know, we, hey, speaking of like, the group within one guy we forgot to mention, Tyson Berry, Vibe Daddy. 
Yep. He was vibe daddy. Yeah. Yep. I'm not saying he would be saving this team right now. No, but but Matias Atcom was supposed to have solidified this defense. We saw it last well, I mean, year. Yeah. Yeah. So is this, he's actually just, the whatever injury he has, I forgot which one it is. Groin hip flexor. Is flexor. that actually really causing concerns yeah, for him? It's the worst and hockey injury there is. And right? that's been part of why this that, season is what soft, it is right now. Yeah. That soft tissue injury yeah. for a defenseman, yeah. it, it, it nags Which may you. potentially be an issue that yeah. McDavid you, you is guys, dealing with, kind of. You guys aren't there yet, but you get to an age where you wake up with injuries. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wake up with a sprained ankle. I'm like, how do I spin my ankle? Right? My shoulder's like, what? I do my shoulder. Like, and, and it gets to a point where a defenseman like that, eventually your hips go out on you yeah. and then... You have you have issues, right? But so. he's thirty four. You talk about like forty five and plus. <laughs> yeah, I'm thirty eight. Yes, sometimes I'm sore, but <laughs> I, I think this I guy, don't believe it. I know. You should see when he's going golfing. <laughs> he has 34. this thing that he puts on his back and it vibrates and stuff. But he's thirty four. That has played he a uses lot of vibrators. I know what you're saying, right? He's basically he's, <laughs> he's played some hard hockey. He's doing what behind himself with what? Yeah, it's a Theragun. <laughs> thank you very much, Will. <laughs> But we had a text in the. It's messed up. That's what it is, dude. Well, it helps. <laughs> we had a text in the text line saying, "Another topic, please." I'm okay, I think we figured it I, out. Okay. What are you doing with that Theragun, man? Healing my. I guess you are my yeah. ailing body. Yes. Yeah. What other real topic is there? There I'm so, isn't. Like, I know. I'm the guy that loves talking about other stuff. Same. Easily. But this is it. Yeah, this I'd is love it to today. Spend a bunch of time with DVD yes. here talking about the eight Champions League matches coming up today <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> no, the the Oilers are an utter that. tire fire right now. They and are. a season that even Leon said a while, like cup or bust team. He's the one the, who said that, it, by the way. And that's it. But they went out cup favorites by a lot of people, and rightfully so, based were, on what we knew and what it. this team, and, and they've earned that right. And you're sitting here where we're coming up on a game on Thursday. Yeah, it's the worst we're team the in the league. Two worst teams in the National must Hockey League. Must win hockey game, and it's a must win hockey. You gotta beat the Sharks. I'll say, like, I'll say this is it's a, always a must win game. Like they could be at the top of the league, and you definitely can't lose to the San Jose no, Sharks. No, you can't. Right? Like, yeah. like, San Jose Doesn't Sharks. Matter where you are. There's no such the thing first as a team non that must loses win. to the San Jose exactly. Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kind of going but the, if in you're, the spiral. If you're second in the Pacific Division yeah. right now and you lose, people will be upset. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a stumble in the road. Like, that's a small little thing. Yeah. Right know. now, that's a job that will be lost. Yeah. Yeah. On Thursday. No, no, if something like, right? Like, that's where this is. Like, you lose to the Sharks. Someone is being fired yeah. going into Friday. Yeah. And. That's do, why this do, is being discussed in the story, and it's going to continue that, to be the rest of the day on Everton Sports Talk. How do you send what, that message? fired? Yeah. Do you do Which you? Want, well, it depends who's getting like, fired. Do you approach a uh, Bob, for example? Do you po- approach a staff and tell him to make sure that it is out there that this is a win or there will be tra- changes oh, type of game? I like, think they know. How do you, I think you have to know. Well, except, I think th- there's been enough. Well, you can sports where there's right. a team you, that is struggling enough, and it's either they get blown out we are, or they lose to a we bad are team and about they go hockey players in their twenties though. So. Just because you think it's no, well, I, think, I think they but see the right thing. I think they've, they've seen it. They've, yeah. seen, they've the seen it with this organization themselves. Yeah. You know, with Tip, and now they started winning some hockey games, and Tip got yeah. fired after that. But I think they kind of know even here, and they've yeah. seen around hockey that if you're going to lose to the Sharks and you're this bad right now when you're supposed to be really good, that's a job. And I again, I don't know what job necessarily. I think that would be Jay. But maybe it is an assistant coach. Maybe it is Dustin Schwartz. Maybe it is Ken Holland. Whatever. Or, There's a body Bouchard, that is or, being. Uh, I don't think it. You think a trade could happen before firing on if they lose on Thursday? I think yeah. they have to make a trade for a firing. I, listen, how many coaches have we recycled here at Edmonton? Like where they've brought in so many guys. Like what's you know what's another coach gonna do? It's just this. This is where coaches come to die. Like and it's gonna be a. Do I want to go to Edmonton? Let's see. They've been through this many coaches. You know, like, what's the problem? Maybe the, the problem isn't coaching if all these coaches are failing. Well, then There's the, a deeper-rooted problem in this, and you well, got to look then, a little higher. The only thing that could honestly be, then, is, like, your leadership core, and you're kind of looking at Darnell Nurse and Ryan Nugent Hopkins to a degree because they've been here the longest. A little bit. There's something. Like, I don't know what else. I don't know where else you could go. With, but there's been something. different management, too, even, right? Yeah. Or or you're, or I'm, I'm going the wrong way. And it's something like we've kind of already talked about. I know it's been talked about in the city before. It's great to the top of the ownership. And it's it's right there that who's, you have owned this team. Who's in the owner's ear? And right. Maybe we've got to look at that. 
It's not necessarily ownership, but who's in his ear? Who is he getting his advice from? Maybe that's an issue, right? Because whoever he's getting the advice from isn't working. So your your team trade. Is there anyone who's team fire? I'm team fire. You're team fire. Yeah, I'm okay. team I don't fire. I, I think the team... coach could turn a team around quickly. I think yeah. it quicker than a trade I, could yeah. for this team. Personally, I don't care. Change, change, yeah. change yeah. for the sake of change is That's the team, team that I'm on. Like, I would mm-hmm. prefer to see a trade. Yeah, I understand the complexities uh, of making that happen, though. In a such and a quick I period think of time, the yeah. route that is more likely well, is team is you fire. and I were talking I, about it. Like, like. The Oilers are not the only team that has fallen on their fla- their face to start the year. There are other teams, i.e. the Buffalo Sabres, that are in a bit of a panic mode. Like, what are the teams out there that are underachieving right now that are in a similar situation? And is there a match there? Like, is there a, a trade you're saying? Yeah. Like, is there something that can... Because it's it's that classic sort of like, there's, a, there's 30 gems that'll hand you a boat anchor at this point. Yeah. But what you want is change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so who's going to offer there's you some, change? There's some the other change, I will throw, like depending who's in net on Thursday, let's say it is Jack Cowan. Like the, it may be that change is legitimately throwing him on waivers and bringing up Pickard. Mm-hmm. Just like Cal Peterson with the Kings last year. Yeah. It's a situation where you're going to actually make like $300,000. Just like Cal Peterson with the Kings again this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> trade. He went to Philly and they, they waived him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but that's maybe like. If you're not going to, maybe it's even just that where it's we're going to give this young kid a shot. It's to your point with Fred Bathway just trying different, yeah, man. And, and maybe it goes there. I think the to me just a, I've seen it. We've all seen enough in coach that often a new coach comes in and there is that little jump start with your team. Yeah, and I think that little shot could help this team. A trade would be ideal, but I just don't know who you can trade. And who you can get in. Well, you like, you want at, a goalie, yeah. but what goalie are you? Is you got to look at other teams. That was Pittsburgh. They spent a lot of money thinking they had one more run in them. Yeah. yeah. They don't. They don't. No. Yeah. Washington. So, what do you want out of you know, Pittsburgh? Right. Though? Well, that's why well, would you take a Tristan Jarry? Because they might be ready to cut bait on Tristan Jarry. Cut bait. Jarry. Yeah, they are. That's a good question. The answer would probably be yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I would take a Carter Hart. Yes. Yes. Would you like. Do you, now. But yes, well, I'm not going to dive, like, dive into the. They're going to want a goalie thing. in return. Take one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I don't think yeah, they which want. one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> which one do you want? Hey, yeah. Do yeah, you as like long any as, of these? as long as they're willing to like mm-hmm. maintain, like make the salary work as far as who's well, holding on to what salary. I, like you got the highest paid GM in the league. If it if it is a trade that needs to be done, this is what you're paid for. Yeah, yeah go well, make that move. Like yeah. we're not the, we're not being paid five mil. So, so go make that move let's and figure it out kind of thing. Gonna, right, so like, yeah. like this is, but like I, and this is where I stand. Like I hope there's someone ahead of Ken Holland making sure he's not pulling that Peter Shrelly type move where if he sit there and go, okay, this one actually, no, no, this is Brandon Manning coming in or whatever. Mm. Like, no, stop. We're not yeah. allowing this trade. You, you're fired, gone, like type thing. I hope there's that I'm one. I'm glad you well, clarified that because level I, we above. don't need to relitigate the Taylor Hall Adam Larson. No, 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 no I would that one. take a Taylor yeah. Hall Adam Larson trade in a heartbeat for this yeah, one. No, no, right no, no, no. I, like, <laughs> that panic trade that all of a sudden hurts you not just now yes, but long term. Yeah. Yes, and that's the only thing yeah. you have to worry about with Ken Holland if you are higher up because he is you know, it, kind of a lame duck GM. If but beyond that, like you're paid five mil, go make a move. Yeah, no, I understand that, and like, I agree with figure you. Figure it out. You're that's what you're paid for. Not to re. Open old wounds, and if you remember this, let me know DVD because I believe Ken Hitchcock had a lot of influence on some of the roster he moves did. that were made, and I think that the Manning one might have been one of those. Bringing up Paul Yarvey right away after they had just sent yeah, him down was another was, one. That was a bad, one. and there was a couple Koskinen of other ones. Was he was defending the, the yeah. Koskinen signing? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people. That so that's like, how much we're of a board with that Koskinen mess signing. that that era was, where they were in such a scramble mode. That Hitch was like, I want that guy on the team. Bring up this guy. I can fix him. And we're using this goalie. I think. And then Shirelli was at a loss. And he's just like trying Let's to tread water. Yeah. And he did it. And it was a detriment to the organization for the next year But when year some of those half. trades happen, how many people immediately are like, good moves? Not, not me. Right? Not right? Me. No, 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 there weren't a lot. There no. weren't a lot. <laughs> it was an terrible. immediate like right away. Like, what deals. the hell are these moves? And that's why like you would hope that there's like a Jeff Jackson would have that in him that if Ken Holland tried to pull the Brandon Manning move right now, would sit there and go, not a chance in hell well, am I, think, I allowing yeah, that one yeah. to pass I this, my I think Jeff guess. Jackson is the buffer there. But like, like I said, 
who's who's calling the shots? Is it Jeff Jackson or is it Paul Coffey? Is it Daryl Cates? Or is it Jeff is it Jackson Daryl Cates and getting Paul influence Coffey, from someone else is, saying we should do this, which has been the case here for a lot of years, right? Wasn't who's supposed to be with ear? Holland, right? Hmm? Wasn't supposed to be the case with Holland here, right? No, wasn't he supposed was supposed to, be to come case. in and he was supposed to have, have autonomy well, wasn't supposed to, to be do whatever the case was with there. Shirelli. Yep. And then he realized he went Game of Thrones crazy like that Daenerys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh my God. Wow, that's a nuts. nerd reference. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> Jon Snow did the right thing. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. For the kingdom. He came, he became like a, like the Game of Thrones. I watched it a couple times in the pandemic. <laughs> I've actually never watched it. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of, I don't oh know if this is God. related to well, the Red the Wedding. I've heard of the Red Wedding, it. but that's about it. The hero went batshit you know crazy. Me. And the <laughs> you, you think did. I jump on board when everyone else is talking about something? You, you've known me long enough yeah. to think that that's me. Jeez, you, yeah. Then you, everyone starts saying, hey, you, you should trash. watch this. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so? So are you saying Game of Thrones is trash? By the end, yeah, man, you would okay, love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I thought that fight trash. scene was amazing in that second last episode. <laughs> my trash is reality TV. Give me Big Brother. Give me the challenge. I'm happy. Exactly. Ew. Oh, Give me those ones. Gross. Wow. No question Ew. about it. It was right. I watch some other TV. I, I'm actually out of TV shows right now because everything's like ending. So should we talk about how the That's... Cowboys got screwed over this year? They get screwed over all the this time. Sunday, man. That's a, being a Cowboys fan. The what was you? The, the refereeing in the fan NFL is absolutely atrocious. Refereeing in all sports is bad. But it's been particularly bad in the NFL. There's no consistency. Guy grabs a guy's jersey, 50 you're penalty. I, the other guy grabs a guy's jersey. Honestly, oh, this, this is my pet project. I, I think the problem is, is that the fans who are traditionalists will not allow officiating to get better. Why? No. Yeah, why? What do you mean? Because... We have videos and computers oh. that can make the right yeah. call, this is and the, we refuse this is the, to let it happen. This is the problem with the officiating, okay, as an official. problem with the officiating now in your major sports is that it's a unionized gig, and you're not getting the best officials to officiate the top games. You're getting the senior officials to officiate the top games who are not necessarily the best officials. You tell me those umpires in the World Series are missing calls left, right, and center are the best in the league? How dare you chance. make fun of Angel Hernandez <laughs> like that? Angel Hernandez is atrocious. Is atrocious. And they it's like it's gotten to a point where the commentator is like, oh, I wonder who he's gonna throw it today. Like <laughs> it's it's so that is the problem with officiating, is that it's become same thing in the NHL. It's not the best guys, it's the more senior guys. That's necessarily the more senior guys are the best. And I think you're yeah. seeing that. But but there is there's a fix to it. Like that's my frustration. There's a fix, like, yeah. When you talk about World level sport. Sure. What is the one that we don't complain about the officiating about? It's tennis. And why do we not complain about the officiating? It's because they've handed off the stuff that a computer is good at to the computer. Then how come all these tennis players throw these little temper tantrums at the umpire? Because they're right? babies. They're the most. Be because you forget athletes what Connors world. and Sampras and those guys actually looked like before. And we think that guys. Losing their temper is them losing their minds. No, 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 no. Go back and watch the replays of guys in the 80s <laughs> and what they used to do. Yeah. That was losing your mind. So, no, like they've addressed it and it's a more successful officiated game now. Well, and you, you look at baseball, we're all sitting there watching that strike zone getting called by a computer correctly every single time. Now, why do we not use the computer for the strike zone? Because the fans would hate it. Because certain people like to say, well, human error is part of the game, which I agree for the players, not for the officials. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to include human error into your calculation when it comes to officiating. NFL would be another perfect one. Like, we know that you could make the right call if you let people in the booth contribute to the calls that are being made, but they're not allowed to contribute to the calls that are being made. Here's the argument against that video is better. VAR. Yeah. In, in soccer. In VAR soccer. in soccer, the assistant, the assistant it's, referee It's been system, atrocious. There's been so many times it has been awful. They've gone to it and they have absolutely screwed it up still. And that's, the, and that's uh, the one counter to technology, and we let it go to the computers, is that now there still has to be humans to analyze however, some of those things. But however, it has, it has not are, been as good as you would expect Computers the are the world. only one that can tell you what's offside in soccer <laughs> <laughs> consistently. And the fact that they still let them make up the time. I love that. 
It's weird. I actually love that they're adding. It they're allows starting to for add more. the <laughs> most corruption in it's all so of weird. sport. But I'm not invested. Is to have those guys that are like, <laughs> well, I got a bookie that wants the over on this one, so we're going to add six more minutes to the yep. end of this game. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but when you get laid into those extra times, it's so much fun. Yeah. What was it? I think Chelsea Tottenham yesterday, like a bunch of yeah. first half extra time. It was like eight, nine minutes. Yeah. Like yeah. It was awesome. I know that you like it, but is it accurate? He's a well, soccer they're supposed ref. to be relatively like they're supposed to be stopping and starting their watch, but for the most part, we can guess what it's going to be. Yeah. So my, my point is, is that yeah. like there could be an AI that's just stopping and starting the well, clock. Man. But actually, FIFA is discussing the idea of going to sixty minute matches as opposed to ninety, but a start stop clock. Yeah. No, oh. and I don't know how well that would fly. How do yeah. you determine injury time when you're refing? Uh, usually on the amount of uh, substitutions and the depends amount of, on if he took the over goals. or the under. Right. <laughs> on the number of goals. Right. In the ladies, thirty-five yeah, plus exactly. league. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. it's a, like exactly. you actually start stop or something like a clock or I wear two watches. Yeah. So yeah. if I, you if know I need to stop, degenerates, them, they'll take action on anything. Oh, man. I know. I know. I've got buddies who watch like. Uh, Japanese ping pong yeah. and bet on it. I'm like, how? They're like, it's on there. I watch it. What? One place you can go make bets is Coolbet. That's right. Coolbet.com. We do got an EST exclusive up right now. Okay. Uh, speaking of soccer, uh, we've got Red Star Belgrade to win or draw against Leipzig, plus Sabres, plus one and a half. That's plus 375 only on a cool bet. Head to cool bet. Click on exclusives in the Edmonton Sports Talk parlay is right there. Plus 375 for Belgrade to win or draw. And then the Sabres plus one and a half tonight. Plus 375. A cool bet. There you go. So just there you go. Me, That's a nice tie Thank you for setting that and that setting me up tie-in. there for that little tie in for our yeah. friends over at Cool Better. Uh, pal Patty setting that one up for us um, this morning. Um, they were talking about the replay. The thing about tennis is it's not actually fully scientific. There were some players that were really upset because it's not like it's 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 a guesstimation, if you will. It's is not like full like computers the, that are the, set up there. The but players it does well. that are upset are they the ones that were in or out? Actually, <laughs> well, that's the thing. actually <laughs> Roger Federer at the start of it was very much against it. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing too. Like, but, is it that accurate? It. Is how accurate is it really? Like when enough, they, they that, show first the of ball, all, it's, enough it's, for all of us to not complain about. It's it, I think. more accurate than the eyeball of the referee, mm-hmm. and it is continually getting more accurate. On yeah, top thing of I, was, I don't think I've ever watched a tennis match. And I, look, I'm not watching tennis matches every week or anything. But I don't think I've ever watched one, saw one, and went, oh, the computer got it wrong. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, okay, that's what it's, and I just believe it. You just believe it, yeah. And I just go but ahead with it. Here's an like, issue, yeah, awesome. here's so here's an issue with that. That was in and out, and here's that's an how that we've gone Even at that. major tournaments. That system is only available in the main courts. That's right. So yeah. you have... All these other courts being played that don't have it. So you're basically you're playing by two different sets of rules depending on what court you're playing on. Yeah. And I think when it comes to soccer, when it comes to the other sports, they don't want different rules depending on whether you're playing in Yankee Stadium or you're playing in the NCAA or you're playing. And I think they want consistent I, rules across I, the board. I completely agree with right? you. And I think that's. But I when, know that was the issue with soccer for a long, long time. They wanted the rules at the World Cup final to be the same as an under 15 game in Edmonton. Mm. They wanted those rules to be the same. That's where they were so. We can't have. So now you're in a situation where tennis, okay, the number, but, the but, top players in the world will get to play by these rules while Joe Schmo in playing in court 10. I'll okay. completely agree with that, like especially with hockey and football, when the fans and the players and the coaches, when a call doesn't go their way, go, huh. It's just the way it is, man. Sometimes mistakes happen. (laughs) (laughs) It's the same mistake that happened in game 45. It just happens sometimes. That is just not the way that our brains are wired. When it comes down to a Stanley Cup final, a Super Bowl, or whatever, you damn sure better make sure that the right call is being made, and you better use everything in your power to get that but the right problem call is in, the, in okay in tennis the ball is in or it's out it's yeah. there's no I agree. Debate. it's black and white it's black and white right. yeah, in and out in hockey is that a hold is that a hook was that really interference yeah, it's if there's there's subjectiveness to PI, it pi hold yeah. on football not, there's so many other so rules you can't, that it's, I'm can't not talking to a computer and I'm, say, I'm not hey, talking hey, is about that holding is that hooking? I'm one. not talking about taking officials off the ice yeah. not saying that referees don't make calls when they're in there. I'm saying that you should have somebody up in a booth who, when he sees that infraction away from the play, 
throws a light on, and at the next stoppage of play, or stops right, yeah. or or, or, the, or the referees get a chirp in their ear mm. to know that hand go up when we, hand go up that we stop it and we get the call from the booth on what happened. I, I on it. I'm. I think hockey needs to add a fifth official, and that needs to be an eye in the sky. I think the NFL needs to add an eye in yes. the sky. The CFL has an eye in the sky. The only problem with the CFL is I don't know when they come and yeah. yeah. Like you watch a game and the eye in the sky calls some like takes away a penalty. Like oh, the eye in the sky. Then other times like oh, they should fix this and nothing happens. Like, well, well, I, what's I the think, point? I think football but, needs to have the T-shirt cannon for the guy with the eye in the sky to shoot the flag <laughs> onto the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. Well, that's a good one. But well, I, like I, I, I think that, that is brilliant <laughs> to have someone that's a little bit away that could watch more that's happening. And could yes. try to pick up on something that was missed. Yes, I'm saying use yeah. technology yeah. to its advantage, cool. while not like while not taking the official off the ice. Because you're right, that stuff that's in that scrum mm. or whatever, you need the eyeball that's right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, did you watch a rugby World Cup final? I did not. Oh my oh, god, it was amazing. That was a great game. But again, there's something that no one seems to know what the rules. are. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're not kidding on that either. <laughs> they pulled the whistle and, and was like, what? what was that for? What was that Part for? of the issue with rugby is that there are so many different types of rugby yeah. that are now being played at Olympic and world champion yeah. levels. It's tough to keep and, track of what are the rules yeah. in this one? Like, Imagine if hockey also had a highly competitive yeah. world championship three-on-three. Three. Yeah. And, and on a smaller hey, ice surface. There's that three-on-three three league on CBS, isn't there, or something like that? Yeah, uh, three ice. There you go. Yeah, I think it did go through season two, which yeah. is good. For, good. So it's it's entertaining. It's I would take that Edmonton it's team. It's coming. So I'd the, take dry like, side like the Rugby David. World Cup, where that guy got a yellow card. Yeah, and then they had eight minutes to review it, and then five minutes into the yellow, into the, his sin bin, they decided it was a red card. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? I don't know how that works. You cover the spread. The man. guy was <laughs> crying on the sidelines. He was crying on the sidelines. It was unbelievable. It was it was an interesting World Cup final. But yeah, I I, I watched I watched my share, fair share of rugby, and I still have no idea what the yep. rules were. No. Back no. to the Cowboys, because um, we're on but that. That's the, the Southern right Hemisphere in you. Yeah, I guess maybe. Um, <laughs> is Dak Prescott the guy? <laughs> yes, for you guys. Yes, yeah. I thought the Cowboys played fantastic football mm-hmm. game, and then when they, they're not. Speaking they're, of meddling owners, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he is the GM. <laughs> so he is the, the GM. Run this team, but the Cowboys, like that game, should have been won, right? They're Dak Prescott steps up, right? Doesn't get the the inch. The, they don't get the touchdown. The inch. They don't get the two extra points. Eagles literally handed them the ball on the twenty yard line, right? And then God, take a sack, take a penalty. It just they don't have and I I blame Mike McCarthy. I never I've never liked him. He's never been I've never liked him. I just think when push comes to shove and when you need a coach to kind of keep his head and make He's the right He's the most call, underachieving head coach in the NFL. He just he, he gets the team to a point, but he can't get them over the hump. And that's speaking to, as a Bears yeah, fan. Yeah. To take but, a delay of game penalty in that situation oh. is unexcusable. That fire the coach right there. Like that's unexcusable. That's the coach not deciding the play in enough time, getting the play in in time. Or, He's been terrible or at clock interfering all the way with back his, to his time with the Packers. Or interfering with his DC with or OC. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Like He's been awful. The Cowboys, and, and they said it on the broadcast, they were down by a touchdown, and they figured, oh, we're just going to drive this ball. They used up the entire clock, and the, and the commentator said, Hold on, guys. A little bit of urgency here, because if you don't get it, this you want to get the ball back. And he was absolutely dead right. And that's Mike McCarthy. That's all on the coach. And I've never liked him. I've never thought he was a good coach. Though the, they he's got an the pieces. above average coach. That's about they it. They got the pieces. I think the Cowboys got the pieces, he, but they just don't have the guy when the when the bullets are flying, when it's you know it's it's crunch time. They don't have a guy that they'll make the right calls, and you can have confidence in him that oh yeah he'll do the right. He thing. has he found a way to finds a way to lose. Keep finding teams. With good to great quarterbacks, yeah, yeah. he's gonna find a way. To, he'll, find, he'll find a way to screw this up. It's kind of like the head coach that finds a way to always have yeah. that good to great goaltender yeah. that covers up some of their their lackings as yeah. far as head coaching is concerned, and, so, or a GM who has yeah. a really great defenseman. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I Nick Lidstrom. Yeah, listen, I I Sorry. I have I been on that, with that one. I've been on that train for decades. Oh, I was on that where train too. Yeah, where I've it. always just been like. I don't think you realize how good Nick Lidstrom yeah. was. Yeah, he was like, unbelievable. He is a top three defenseman of all time in my books. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, you built yeah, you built that the fence around him. Yeah. And then it didn't matter who was playing goal for you right. at the time, right? Chris Osgood and Mike Vernon. Yeah. And then then and Hoshik. Then Hasek, yeah. Man, then Osgood again. And then Osgood again. Yeah. Legacy. That's uh, right. Are the Bears gonna go back to Justin Fields? Should they go back to Justin Fields? Uh the Bears need a new owner. Uh, oh, you're I there? Mean, yeah. Damn. I I really don't I'm I'm not concerned with what's going on on the field for that team because they are they are a team that plays with one hand tied behind their back at all times. They they are seriously going to move that team out of Soldier Field. Well, that's that's, that's still happening, isn't it? Like, the and, and it's new just, it's just one of those things. Like that right there tells you everything you need to know about the ownership of the Chicago Bears. That they would rip that team off of the lake out of downtown Chicago and put them in the burbs so that they can get better parking concessions is right there. They, they should be told by the rest of the NFL, uh, thanks, but you need to sell the team now because you don't get it. Didn't the you city- don't get who the Chicago Bears are if you move them out of Soldier Field. Didn't the city even offer up like $2 billion or oh, a billion and a half to keep them there? Absolutely. They, but there's no parking. I, right? I've, I've been there, yeah. Yeah. What there is is incredible transit. Yes. Incredible parks. I've, ever, walk I've, been, in. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. It's yes. beautiful. And it, it's the perfect atmosphere to go and watch a football game and feel like you're mm-hmm. part of a community. And they want to take that away from that fan base. They want that parking room. That's all you need to know about the owners of the Chicago Bears. They have no oh, owners concept. Owners of the NFL in yeah. general. They have no concept of what it means yeah. to be a Chicago there's Bear. There's no parking revenue there. So now they want to figure put the Yeah, there's like nice the parks and there's the train. It's oh, a gorgeous spot. Yeah. Like you, you watch the Philadelphia Eagles and the whole brotherly shove thing. That's an organization that gets their identity. They understand who they are to their community and to the rest of the NFL. And the Chicago Bears had an identity for 40 plus years. And then somewhere around the late 90s and into the 2000s, they've just never been able to replicate the idea that they are they are a big, mean team that makes you suffer because you have to play on Lake Michigan in November. They don't get that. They they want something else. They want to be Tampa Bay, and they're not Tampa Bay. Yeah. No, I, I agree. There's, yeah, that's it's too bad what's happening in that franchise. Oh, yeah, but it's just <clears throat> a continuation yeah. of half measure, right? Like, they just, they never understand what they're supposed to be. Identity is, like, Last you're, you're a good. Yankees fan. Yeah. You understand what oh, the Yankees like, are supposed to look like. Yeah. And, like, when they built a new facility, you're like, oh, boy, but they just replicate. Yes, like they, we're gonna make it look the exact same. Yeah, and it was basically across the road. Yeah, it, it was in the parking lot across yeah. the street. Yeah, yeah. Across. like they basically and, just moved across. And the, the only road. thing that changed was that with because of where it is with the winds, the shot to right field leaves the park very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And very <laughs> easily. That was all of a sudden a thing yeah. that changed. Yeah. But but even then, to a degree, it's like well, it's a shame that they did tear like, down. Can you the old imagine Stadium, the but, Red like, Sox the, leaving Fenway or well Wrigley in Chicago even? Wrigley's. I mean. If you've, I, I was just at Wrigley and like they, Wrigley. It's they basically excavated 80 feet below the field to create what they needed. Yeah. Like, well, but that's the, like, you have to renovate these places. Right. You need, um, who they is it? Fenway. Real Madrid is going Fenway's through a big renovation. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Barcelona is about to go through a massive yeah. renovation. They're not tearing down their stadiums. They're taking what they have and they're trying to redo it. So you're that's still right. going to the same spot. Um, well, in Italy, Milan is MSG, trying to they did change. That with MSG. MSG's, yeah. MSG's yeah. constantly yeah. going through those renovations, yeah. and when you have a place like, like Soldier Field, is one of those. Oh, you keep that. Yeah, you find a way to improve it. You Lambo. find a way to renovate it in a way. Mm-hmm. But that's an iconic place that you need to keep. Yeah. The fact they kept those pillars is awesome and built kind of around. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's a great facility. It looks like a spaceship, but it's a beautiful spaceship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unlike those other <laughs> spaceships. Yeah, well, Jerry, World, spaceship. Jerry World's beautiful, but you're like, whoa, this is weird. That's but you te- know what it has? That's Texas, though, man. It has a lot of parking. has yeah. great parking. Yeah, there's, there's, parking. there's ample parking all that's over that you, facility. You look at that parking, like, that's an issue. You have 100,000 people, let's say. Yeah. And so they're coming in maybe 50,000, 20,000, 30,000 cars, 30,000 cars coming to the game. You're charging, what, 20 bucks parking, 25 no, bucks some parking. of those oh. are like 100 bucks. The parking stall is almost Seahawks as much as weekend, the ticket. It's like 125 Yeah. yeah it's, so they will charge you over 100 That's a lot of revenue. Remember, <laughs> WrestleMania <laughs> comes by, and I think it was like 150 wow. almost 200 or something. You weren't in Dallas when I, I was living in Oklahoma, so it was during the lockout. Yeah. So I went to a Cowboys game, 
and uh, we we tried to find cheap parking, and we found some. It was like twenty five bucks, mm-hmm. but we were like a kilometer and a half from the stadium. We could see it, and we, our walk to it was like ten minutes. Yeah, and we got our cheap, cheap parking. Party, and I'm like, man, bucks. we should have spent the extra twenty bucks just to be right there. <laughs> Wouldn't have been a big deal. Yeah. And if you have four guys in the car, right? The oh, I bought a lot of drinks. You have three or four guys in the car. That, that's not really that nothing. much money. We, we brought our home grill, Chris Westcott, God bless him. Uh, he brought a little grill, and we brought some, like, dogs and some burgers and so stuff. So you guys had a little tailgate? A little party. propane thing. We barely got it going. It was awful. So we all ate at <laughs> oh, the game. See, at a place like that, you don't bring your own stuff. You go, you go make take friends. from others. Yeah, you go there, make friends, you go make man. Friends. There was like a, a Latino tailgate yeah, you party. Go make friends, and they man. had like burritos and tacos, street tacos going. They're like, come on, man. You want yeah. a Modelo? We're like, yeah. <laughs> and I always feel bad doing that at the Elks tailgate. I hate walking around trying and like taking someone else's food. Like, they, but, they, but no, that's, that's the culture. That's how but you, it feels weird. No, and I don't know. I always feel awkward. People I know, and, yeah. but I'm not good at that. Me and people. Uh, speaking as know. speaking as someone who likes to feed people, you it's it's a pleasure to be able to give yeah. somebody uh, a full belly. Yeah, yeah. Those elks tailgates are actually not bad. Yeah. They're, they're fun. Time. Hey, Jerry Raxi, Spirit of Edmonton. Yeah. They do a great job with that, and, and it's getting better and better. And, and they've better. got the big Grey Cup next week yep. in Hamilton, Spirit of Edmonton, which will be once again the party of Grey Cup, like it always is. <laughs> Hamilton's a great town for a Grey Cup, is it? Yeah, I, I, yeah. No, I've never it's, been. It's, I've it's a community through. that, Hamilton, Hamilton that is figures a, it out. Yeah, it's a. I've been to Hamilton. It's it's a. Yeah, they're not Toronto. No, Hamilton. exactly. Yeah. Right, they're they very know proud who of their they are. community. Yeah, very proud of. Yeah, I like that. So it's next always... year's Vancouver though, and that's going to be fun. Well, yes, that's just because location. a weekend in Vancouver is fun, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's yes. pretty hard not. But to now find you're a good going there because of the CFL and yeah. everything yeah. that happens around the <laughs> CFL, and it's yeah. close. The party that's going to come, yeah, that's going to be a fun one. EST is going to go. We're going to have to ask Jerry for VIP. Oh, for he was offering them for this year. Oh, perfect. But we're not going. Except Dusty, so I said talk to Dusty. Dusty's going, yeah. So we'll be able to get them. We'll be able to get them. Actually, that's one of the best parts about being media. Sorry to everyone listening. Um, Spirit we, of Edmonton party? Oh, my well, God. Uh, the best. CFL media pass gets you into all the parties. Yes. Yeah. Just, you just could like, walk into anyone. As you it is awesome. true. Like, you go wherever you want, any of the parties, just have your CFL media pass to yes. let you in. When my great cup was here, we hit all the parties. Oh, it was, it was that awesome. was, the so, last one was great. 2010 was a lot of fun, but the last one yeah. was amazing. 18 was amazing. Yeah. My it brother, Polly. Happy birthday, Polly. Happy birthday, birthday Polly. Yeah. Happy birthday, Polly. How old is he? 31. Oh, Happy 31st, It's all over, Paul. Paul. It's all over. <laughs> but, uh, when he was in his youth in 2018, we took him to the Grey Cup. We took him to Spirit of Edmonton. And I was like, hey, man, like, pace yourself. Like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, it's this a long is, night, bud. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, shut up, Tom. You don't know what you're talking You're old. You're, you're worn out. And I was like, I'm serious, man. You got to save it up for this one. And he's like, I've been drinking since three. I was, you know, smoking up. And I was like, uh-oh, you yeah, are in yeah. trouble. And... He took down a whole high top of fresh drinks, like just, 15 no, drinks. Just pass out. Yeah. And uh, security was looking for him. And oh. we took him to the dance floor. And we're like, just start moving. Hang on. Just start moving. And security's like, excuse me, did you just knock over a table full of drinks? And they're like, no, that was some other guy. And I'm like, this guy's with me. He's good. And they were watching him like a hawk the whole night. And he's like, I'm fine, man. I'm fine. And I was like, spirit of Edmonton. Gets another one. Those yeah. parties are awesome. And all so good. Event. The, actually, the the Stampeders one was pretty good too. We yep. went to that yep. one, and yeah, they do. I love the Great Cup. I love the CFL. So I just like you know, it's, it's a great it's, party it's, it's a great for party. those that knock the CFL. That it's a community. I don't well, think anyone ever knocks a Great Cup week. No, no, and they should. But, but I think there's a lot that have never experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's one of those. That's one of the reasons I'd be sad if the CFL went away outside of the football and the league. When do these parties in Canada happen? Grey Cup. You get it for Grey Cup, and you get it for Junos. Yeah. Uh, and I, Junos, not as much as I think it once was. This year, though, was awesome here. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Um, I think that, people don't have these. like to party. You'd find a way. But where else do they happen in uh, the country? All of a sudden, Vanier Cup becomes a way bigger party. Like, like you, I don't know. Like, and that's, of that's one says, of the reasons to keep the CFL, is to keep Grey Cup week. Yeah, because but there's it, people that show up and don't even watch the game. They fly home during the game. Spirit of Edmonton would find yeah. somewhere to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they would... If the if what the nation needs is a week long party uh, a kitchen in a party. different place everywhere, I think they'll figure it out. No. Like, mm. I, 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 I don't want to believe. You I, know I, I, I don't want to try that. I, I don't want to get to the a spirit point. of Edmonton. I, I guess is what I'm going to say. I don't like, want to get to those guys have perfected the party, 
and yes. they know how important they are to yeah. it. I, I don't want to get to a point where we're having to see if this is true or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just want, let's keep Grey Cup, let's keep Grey Cup week. Change happens, And let's man. have a wonderful time. <laughs> you want to kill the CFL? <laughs> oh, I've been trying to kill the CFL for a decade, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Stop it, Will. Stop it. No, I love the CFL. No, I, uh, I don't want to do No it one should forget their kids' names making $80,000 a year. <laughs> That's how I feel about the CFL. It breaks my heart is what it does. Oh, we're going to have some great games. Entertains like crazy, but oh, we're gonna man. have a great couple games this weekend, and yeah. also the Golden Bears going for the Canada West title, right? Hardy Cup taking on UBC in Vancouver, two o'clock or is it one o'clock? I think it's two o'clock uh, on Saturday. So telling me you wouldn't go to that Spirit of Edmonton? It's not the well, same. I don't know. With, uh, it's it's I not go. Have the we, we go because we love but it. Then, buddy, but it's the thing, the, if you're there, tougher it's sell. a party. If there was no oh, CFL, <laughs> I I don't think Canada's flocking to the Vanier Cup. No, probably yeah. not. Even That's if the more Spirit of Edmonton party, there. though, yeah. you feel old there. Trust me, feel I old feel old like, everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tom will never feel old. Yeah. yeah, well, just look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Just smoke three cigarettes every morning mm. yeah. and bathe in formaldehyde and oil of Olay. Yeah. yeah. Good That's go. it. And you're set. I think so. He also I, he also has a picture in his attic of a really old looking Tommy Gazzola. And it gets older every day. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Some weird voodoo, man. I can uh, believe it. I, oh I would God. not be surprised to find that picture someday. Hidden under a sheet. <laughs> I like how you're thinking this like, whole process. This? Like, yeah. You've you mapped never, this all out in your what, mind. What's the name of that? It's, uh, it's an old story. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you're the one coming up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was in the uh, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen as well. Never watched it. Oh, you did not miss anything. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you still recall it, though. You know enough to, who was, to bring this up here. Things what was burn that, into your brain. That character in Game of Thrones. She was. She was like yes. a rocket. But then, do you have? Well, you have pendant? a red pendant? Yeah, I do. And yeah. then when I take it off, it I turn into a wrinkled yeah. old dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The witch was the, the witch. Yeah. 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 I have no idea what you're talking she about. She sacrificed you herself awesome. at the end. You were too busy watching Big Brother. Yeah. yeah. And you don't know what's going on this season, how Jag is rolling through the season. <laughs> I am completely okay. Big Brother's still on? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's don't, been, uh, don't get him started. This is your season 25. Oh, my this God. This is who Matthew Wanick is. He pays for the... like. The, I did it only a couple years. They he, were great he years. He paid for the VIP yeah. pass. I did And then wouldn't share his password with anyone. No, I would <laughs> Dusty wanted it. And I was like, That's yeah. all you need to know about Matthew Wanick. Dusty wanted it. You pay... Give me some cash. That's funny. So oh, this, so the cost oh my. It's, everything's a transaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get, uh, this year I could get it for free on my phone and stuff. So I, I didn't watch it as much as I thought I would this summer. Oh, but, shocker. Uh, yeah, season 25 and we're going into season 11 of Canada Big Brother. And then there's Celebrity Big Brother that happens every couple of years. No thanks. It's great. That's Which is ironic. Wonderful. What an ironic of, title. So oh, Celebrity Big it's Brother. It's D-listers. Exactly. At best. <laughs> at absolute Big best. Brother. But it's fun. You know what's messed up how many people i know that have gone on to big brother canada and i'm just like oh my god you've known a few of those people? yeah we know a few of them well chelsea was on there yeah mark um mark when well, they came to work with us yeah so there's that and one. there's been a couple of others um i don't really know any of the other ones i know some people have known like there's always someone on there that knows like i know someone who yeah, knows yeah, that yeah. person or something and then ty smith my buddy ty just won amazing race canada congrats ty and cat that was cool. <laughs> I what? What? No, I'm. They I, did. I, and congratulations, Diane Cat. They're great. If you had somebody you'd want to partner up with for Amazing Race, who would it be? DVD. Me? Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. Because we go on adventures. You guys would go to. We have, you guys would go to the bar and miss you know out what? on the first challenge because <laughs> you guys were <laughs> drinking that whole night before. <laughs> we have some gone on Probably. some fun adventures. We have had some crazy yes, crap happen though. Together. Yeah. So. Pick. I know oh, who I'd go oh, with. Dustin, We've talked about it a little bit. Dustin before. Nielsen for sure. Really? Oh, first of all, he he would connive. He'd be so <laughs> up for it. He'd be so enthusiastic. And and I could Waldorf and Stadler him the whole time. Which is my favorite thing in the world. It's what you did at the draft last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> would it be Tommy for you? Probably. Yeah. yeah you have to yeah. say that because he said it. No, because because we've Yeah. We've we've had uh, yeah. We've had some good we've, adventures. We've been like, on the we've road been all a lot. over the world. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's been me and Yukon Jack. We've talked about it. Yeah. We yeah. work well together. Yeah. 
Him and I would work extremely well ball. together. You guys would be out of there in the first day. Why would you say that? They, they, <laughs> the rest of the crew. We would compliment each other yeah, so well. No, they, Yuke's got that show social aspect. I don't. Yeah. We'd connive extremely well yeah. together. We're both heels. Yeah. We'd play the absolute heels of that season. <laughs> yeah, no, they'd, they'd sniff out that you guys were too close. You're supposed to be close. You're supposed to know each other. No, I know, but like that, there was no and wedge to be Yuka, driven. Oh, I don't you. know Yukon that well, but he seems to me like a guy that would forget his passport and then you'd be done. But no, see, this he's is where very we compl- thorough. He would be thorough, but the compliment would be, I would remember, hey, yeah. do you have your passport? <laughs> or I'd have his passport or something. That's where we uh, like, would The intriguing thing about a Yukon is I think I could get in his ear enough that he would betray you just, oh, just you for the show. You want to know something? Just, just for the, the, the turn. As the fact that I say we're both heels, yeah. that is the complete heel move. Yeah. That we would get yeah. close, yeah. and then he'd screw me yeah. over just for the sake of the show. Yeah, exactly. Of that he screwed me over yeah. out of this. Yeah. Well, it actually don't be who's going to screw each other yeah. first. Yeah. Like, which one's going <laughs> to take the other one out? Yeah. There'll always be that. Maybe that's the wedge between us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. Uh, we would actually he'd do chair really shot well you for sure. You'd never see it coming. No. No. <laughs> and you want to know something? I'd fully... Res- I'd, at the yeah. moment, I'd be upset. Yeah. But then I'd be like... Oh, I'd yeah. shake you'd, his hand and be like, around. you bested me. Yeah. <laughs> you bested me, you. Well done. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I knew you'd you'd get that whole thing when you've known Yuke long enough. Oh, I've been counseling the heel turn on Yuke and yours relationship for years. Because that doesn't happen. <laughs> Unless he's the one that got 1260 got degrees. Yeah, I think so. Maybe it was Yuke's fault. Yeah. I half expected the video of him pulling the the lever to shut the power off. Actually, the engineer we had at the radio station, he filmed that. Yeah. He went to the transmitter 24 hours after we were that message was playing, and he powered down the transmitter, and he filmed it just as a little thing, and he played it for me, and it was really Damn. interesting. Uh, he needed approval. He was checking on approval to see if he could send it to some people. I should follow up with him if he got that approval because it'd be nice to have. But Trev actually, yeah. he recorded that and you could just hear the message in the background that all of a sudden just nothing. And there was the end of 1260 AM. 80 yeah. years, man. All gone. Yeah. Just like that. Trev did it. He didn't want to, but... The Maritimer. Yeah. yeah. He came here and did it. You know what's great is Trev also had to fix that thing and Ray by hitting it at times. Oh, it totally was a Fonzie machine, man. Yeah. That was the no, jukebox Bob. from Happy oh, Bob. Days. Bob. Okay. Bob, yeah. Bob Hunter. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There was a machine at the AM transmitter site. And we had an engineer, Bob, and under him was Trev. And then Bob retired, so Trev was alone. And <laughs> early on, something was not right at the, our transmitter site. Yeah. So Trev went out there and couldn't figure this out. So he calls Bob freshly into retirement. He's like, hey, can you come help me? Bob's like, yeah, absolutely, I'll come by because Bob's great. They come, they start looking at Bob's like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. For whatever reason, for this machine, you just have to hit it. And he fonzied it. And the thing started working. Was, yeah, for, you just got to do that, and it'll start working again. And we, leg- our AM transmitter was working by Fonzie move. Yeah, <laughs> it was like the weirdest thing, and that's which, which is AM. I mean, that yeah. you're just describing. That's AM, AM radio. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that station had some static on it, <laughs> but we're static free since 23 that's here on right. Edmonton Sports Talk. Uh, also on TuneIn right now, we're at uh, 960 favorites on TuneIn. I'm hoping we can get to 1,000 by like the end of the week or something, which would kind of be kind of cool. Less than two weeks on that app, and we have 1,000 likes. It's awesome. It, and it's. I showed it to my mom the other day. She's like, oh, this is easy. I'm like, yeah, it's even easier than it was before. Uh, and then YouTube, or, you know, if you're not subscribed yet. Is that what your mom sounds like? It's just like that. Like perfect? Yes. It's like my mom. He's nails. When you meet her, yeah, Eva you, G. like it's not a, like he's. You know, that's her accent. Yeah, that's how she sounds. <laughs> that's her accent. That's her Polish accent. I'm coming yeah. over. I got you new sheets. <laughs> and she did. Thank you, Mama. So this is my birthday present. She was away. She was in Europe for like two months. What kind of sheets? A good thread count. They're yeah. very comfortable. Solid thread yeah. count. Yeah, like solid thread count. They look great with my new place. What color? Like green. <laughs> green. <laughs> Come, you live in my building. You Come always, down and have a beer. Have I'll show it you. Weird, like, hey? It's not hard. Yeah, Absolutely. I've learned, learned from you, Will. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned from you. <laughs> You made the comments about his vibrator earlier today. No, he uh, made the comments. It's a Theragun. I clarified. <laughs> it's a Theragun. Thank you You went very further much. with it, Will, because that's yeah. what I've learned from you. You make things awkward. Like a, <laughs> a gun gun? Like I'm not even going to answer that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good to have you in again this week. So, how about them Oilers? Could, I mean, it's a video format. Could you show us exactly how this gun works? I will not. I will do no such thing. 
It works well. <laughs> you can go that. golfing. Yeah, it helps my back. <laughs> yeah. I listen, I I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. It sounds like it does. Yeah. I'm happy it provides you relief it? of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to borrow it? He asked. Things can get really. Do you tight actually have that in your bag and you carry it around? Yeah. Well, at the end of the golf season, my back was killing me, so yeah. I would like like you don't have. It now, I would bring basically. it here. No, it's at yeah. home. But like I have brought it here. And Where? Where in your thing. house is it? In my office, Will. In my office. Not not the not the side table <laughs> next to the bed. Will Fraser, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hangover presented by Moscow Club Adam Caesars. <laughs> Over 400 million cans crushed by Canadians every single year. The top Caesar brand. You can find Mott's Clamato Caesar. Um, are you going on the road anytime soon here? Or not like, that I like, know. Are you I just focused on the disaster that I is gotta, this town? Yeah, I'm focused on the disaster that's occurring. God right bless now. the Edmonton <clears throat> Oilers, hey? Like, there's always something. You know, it's... I, I Honestly, I've, we've covered it a decade of darkness that lasted 13 years. So as decade plus the darkness, and then I, I did not see this coming. I, I honestly did not. Who no, could this you? I don't think a lot of people did. Which is why I, the solution is not immediate, well, right? Like, which is well, why you're just not an like, easy. It's not an easy fix, and yeah. I think that's the thing is like people are saying, fire the coach, that'll fix everything. Get rid of the goalies, that'll fix everything. Uh, you know, like it's not an easy fix. There's, I do there's, think there's that levels this is, here that we have to, I think of, this is the rare situation for change for change's sake is actually the right move. Maybe, but it's, has that ever worked? How many coaches are we going to have to recycle through here? And not, it hasn't been no name coaches. Well, it's been for high example, profile coaches. Hall of, of Famers. Famers. It Hall worked of Fame with coaches. Woodcroft. It did work with Woodcroft. Was he a Hall of Fame coach that came No, here? but like... But the change. But the change came change and that team all of a sudden sake. went to the conference final yeah, that year. Like, and last year was the second best team in the Western Conference yeah. in the regular season. Like, so it, it, to your... Like, it has worked. It's just now maybe... Maybe he's a guy that has a shelf life. Maybe he's... Yeah, but a, a year and that, a half? Gallant? What did he have? It's in, 11 in a couple bad times. games. Like, that happens. It's not even a year and a half. It's 11 bad games and you're firing the guy. He, after he took you to you because know. it's not just a bad eleven, it's an atrocious eleven. Yeah. But it's eleven, like, like let's you're keep it right at the bottom. You had Todd McClellan. Yeah. He lasted three and a half years in this McDavid era. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you bring in, you know, Hitchcock finishes, mops up that season, whatever. You bring in Dave Tippett, known as a, an excellent coach. He lasts two and a half years. Mm-hmm. COVID was messed up. I understand that. Now you're bringing in, you brought in Jay Woodcraft, takes you to a conference final and the second round. You lose to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Team stumbles out of the gate in absolutely amazing fashion. If, if the move is to get rid of him, he's lasted one and a half years. Yeah. What With the best, the best, best record that they've had expletive. here. Yeah, well, he's, he, and he has the best record. You look at all the coaches that have come through here, he has the best, best winning percentage of yeah. all of them. As of yesterday, it was 650. But, yeah. It's not about the past. It's about this season, and this season. But this trend this isn't is even. Pathetic. Pathetic. But this know, season, how, how long you're not head even... coach last. Well, their shelf life is like four years. That on average. Yeah, right? I, I say any coach that makes it to three years has. And nowadays, it, it has hit a very comfortable number. End. You're close right? to the end. In that, to my opinion, so they've had one coach that outlived it. One coach uh, that until you get a John Cooper hit it. Well, but John like, Cooper's the the. Like he's the exception. He's the exception that proves the rule. Not like when you find that you hold on to that. Yeah, and I don't think the Oilers have had that. Where well, the Oilers interviewed John Cooper, and they decided not to hire him. Um, Was that 2013? Before he went to Tampa, that might have been right before Aikens. Yeah, might have. I can't remember. Yeah, right. So they've had their shots. They've had their chances with some of these coaches. I listen. I, I get it. It's the coaches are hired to be fired. Yep. Um, Especially when you have a Connor McDavid, because well, you're not trading Connor McDavid. No, but look at how many coaches have not been able to do with Connor McDavid what Jay Woodcroft did. Yeah, right. I just it, it, to me it doesn't make sense from a guy that has seen high end, mm-hmm. highly respected, excellent coaches come through here and not succeed. And so the one guy that did succeed, you're going to get rid of him after 12 games. Eleven. Well, maybe twelve. He's got, after one, he's got one more, right? Yeah, he's got yeah, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I th- I, I, come on. I think it's because he raised the expectations, right? Like, but then you go back to the a Todd McClellan um, gets you to the height that Todd McClellan can get you to, and then he can't get you any further. And that's been the story of his career. And so he has lasted as long as he has in L.A. 
because they're fine with making the playoffs. Yeah. Like that's that's their high water mark. Get us into the playoffs. We'll see what happens after that. That's not the situation in Edmonton anymore, right? It, it was for the first two to three years of Todd yeah. McClellan's tenure, and then it exceeded that, and he couldn't do it. And yeah. Dave Tippett, definitely, he was not the answer, and no. they probably held on to him for half a season longer than they should have because they didn't want to do that, ah, we've been through so many coaches sort of yeah. thing. Like, you can't let that past dictate your future. You have to make decisions based upon what your expectations are of this lineup. And the expectations of this lineup were to be Stanley Cup contenders. And right now, they are contending for the first pick in the upcoming draft. Isn't analytics all about the past predicted the future? Aren't you guys big on analytics? Well, analytics will give you an idea of what is fair to expect. <laughs> so. Right? Like, it'll also tell you that, is it fair to expect Ryan Nugent Hopkins to score 105 points this year? No, it's not. There will be some regression to the mean. Yeah, and everyone's regressing. I think that's mm -hmm. the issue. Everyone yeah. had career years. Everybody had career years. Yep. So you go through that lineup. But DVD, even if guys have average years this year, they shouldn't be two, eight, and one. No. But they're <laughs> no, not they're having, having terrible years. Yeah. They went to, from one extreme years. to the yeah. other extreme. You can't have more worse than zero, zero, zero after 11 games. And there's too many guys on this team that have that. Mm -hmm. And that's it for the hangout for today. Uh, Will, DVD, thanks Pleasure for stopping by. I really yeah. appreciate this. I got a hat Excellent last time work. I was here. You got a hat? <laughs> you, we have more. Do you want some no, more hats? No, it was a Cowboys hat. It wasn't for Oh, that's guys. I was oh. trying to think which we were Jack was here. Jack was here with pro and he brought hats. We've got some hats. You want I haven't gotten Jack. You know what? I've got multiple hats. <laughs> you got, we got a hat for you. You can boy. make a choice. We, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this after. That's uh, the ESD Hangout presented by Mons Clamato Caesar. Up next, it is the Lock Shop. Dusty Huss. I don't know if Pat Gregoire will be on, uh, but they'll get you set for the night at Action of Sports. And then Shaking at bank. noon, it is two guys and a goalie. Fuller, further dissection of this Edmonton Oilers team. Walking <laughs> Gage, Matt Cass, and Dustin Nielsen. That's here, all here on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Those listening on, tune in as well as our YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning into the Hangout. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.